an eccentric white-haired man with a tattoo on his chest, was asking a child if he could make a better cocktail than the flaming passion he had just drunk, telling him that honesty was very important to him. The child replied that if he couldn't do it, the man was free to take his life. The store owner tried to stop the man, Yang Lao, saying he would not allow him to do this. Yang insisted on letting him try, assuring him that he would pay for his fee. To him, life was like a dream, but it was still beautiful. It was like a glass of fine wine that could be sweet, have a romantic atmosphere, and be unforgettable after just a single taste. The glass of fine wine was like love. It could make people taste the sweetness and bitterness of life. This was why he believed that a perfect glass of flaming passion needed to be made from the heart. Each glass was supposed to be invigorating. The drink also had a touching name, Bloody Mary. He took a sip of the child's drink, and it made him feel like he had just found his long-lost happiness. It was like the heart-wrenching sadness in his real body, and like the emotions buried deep in his heart that were completely unable to flow out. Yang was amazed with the drink, saying how he had never drunk such an unforgettable cocktail before. He asked him how he had prepared the Bloody Mary. Suddenly, the child was gone. Yang wondered what had happened, and a black-haired bartender asked if he had not just been there a moment prior. The people started to look for him. A woman said that the bartender may have already left, and someone else added that he had left right after making the wine. The child's name was Ji Dong. His real name was actually Ji Thaw, but he had been transported to another world. In that world, he was known as one of the world's greatest bartenders and was known as the Lord of Wine. He was known to have created countless myths in the wine-tasting culture. Because of his commitment to wine, he had volunteered to taste the newly unearthed fine wine from the Han Dynasty. The wine had him vomit blood and fall into a coma. He had then woken up to find himself in another world, trapped in the body of an orphan on the streets. The only thing he had on himself was a jade pendant. It had been a month since he had arrived, and he had learned that the world was called the Five Elements Continent. The place where he was staying was called Liwo City. The lifestyle of the people there wasn't very different from his original world. According to his understanding, he was no longer able to go back where he came from, so he had to establish a new life in this world. Just then, flames appeared beside him. He turned to see a man flying in midair. The man charged at him, telling him he was there to get him. Dong was confused, but before he could do anything, he had been knocked out. He woke up in a palace room wondering where he was and if he was dead. A familiar voice assured him he was still alive. The man told him he had been sleeping for three days and three nights and had now finally woken up. He asked Dong if he remembered him. Dong took a moment to look at him before realizing that he was the man at the Flaming Passion Bar. It was the most popular bar in Liwo City. He had asked the bartender for a glass of their finest cocktail. The bartender had recognized him to be Yang. It had been a long time since he had last visited. The bartender prepared him a special glass at once, telling him it was the store's best cocktail known as the Flaming Passion. He proudly claimed that Yang would not find any cocktail better than his own in the Nanhuo Empire. Ji Thaw, who was sitting close by, interrupted him, saying it was just so-so. He made a bet against the bartender, saying that he would have to pay for his liquor expenses if Dong succeeded with a Flaming Passion a hundred times better than his. Do you want to know the name of this manga, along with all the manga names of the recaps we did in our channel? How about also the chapter numbers our recaps end? You can simply ask the names in our Discord community for free or become a donor to get them all in one place. You can either be a donor in Patreon or be a member in our YouTube channel. Just scan this QR code or go to the link in the description to become a donor. Moreover, becoming a donor automatically makes you a VIP member of our Discord server with over tens of thousands of members. Yang was now focusing his full attention on the boy. Dong remembered him as the man from the bar and asked why he had kidnapped him. It could not just have been to make him recreate the cocktail from before. The man praised him for his half-decent memory and told him he shouldn't talk like that. He had only wanted to invite Dong to his place and had not expected him to be so weak to the point that he would faint on the spot. He had had no choice but to carry him back and help him recover. He asked Dong if that really sounded so strange to him. He then told him his body was weak and he should rest for a few more days at his place. The man tried to flatter him, saying how his bartending skills were so good for his age, before coming to his point. He wanted Dong to give him an honest answer about his relationship to the Lord of Wine, Duskong. Dong was confused as he had never heard of such a lord before. The only Lord of Wine he knew was Li Ji Dong and that was him. He figured that the man wouldn't believe him if he told him that a Lord of Wine had been reborn here and instead decided to give him a random reason and get it over with. He began by saying that he had originally been born into a winemaking family and his family fortune would decline as both his parents passed away. As a result, he had ended up in the streets. Yang explained that he had been visiting the bar due to his love for wine and had not expected to meet him there. Dong told him he had overheard the bartender claiming there was no better wine, so he could not help but take a look at it himself. 
Feeling embarrassed, he said that he too had a question for the man. He wanted to know where that place was and who the man was. He was also curious about how he could use special abilities. Yang was taken aback and started laughing at him. He asked if he was talking about his ability to produce flames. It seemed like he was actually a sheltered kid who loved wine. He told him he was the dean of the Li Huo Academy, the most famous academy of the Li Huo Empire, and his technique was not a special ability, but a yin-yang crown. There were five elemental crowns, and he was the seventh level grandmaster of the fire crown. In that continent where the five elements were the focal points, being a yin-yang master was arguably the most important profession. An ordinary yin-yang master capable of condensing yin-yang crowns was on par with at least ten adult fighters, while a powerful yin-yang master had the ability to destroy an entire city. Dong completed his statement, realizing how some even had the ability to change their lives and achieve their fullest potentials. Yang told him to not get too excited, since the selection process of becoming a yin-yang master was extremely rigorous. He made Dong an offer. He would let him stay in the academy as a part-time working student if he was willing to become Yang's personal bartender. Dong took a moment to think about it. It felt depressing having fallen to such a point that he was not even able to perform high-level bartending techniques due to his weak body and age constraints. He figured since he was being given another chance, why not use it to try and return to the peak of his life? He agreed to Yang's offer, but he had three conditions. The first one was that he needed a separate bartending room, and secondly, he would only make Yang one cocktail each day, which he guaranteed would be memorable. In return, he had to be responsible for all of Dong's expenses. Thirdly, once he entered the Li Huo Academy, Yang had to help him finish his studies as much as possible in order to condense his yin-yang crowns. And if he felt like he couldn't condense the yin-yang crowns at any moment, he would immediately leave. Yang agreed, but he also had a condition. He would only train Dong to condense the yin-yang crown, but he wouldn't teach him magic skills. Magic skills could only be used with yin-yang crowns, and learning them required being a disciple of a master or buying expensive magic books. Even if one was to spend large amounts of money, it still wouldn't guarantee him powerful magic skills. In essence, it was impossible for someone without a strong talent to learn magic skills from him. This was why he had only had one disciple so far. Dong thought about it for a second, looking at him and finally agreed. Yang told him there was food prepared for him, and when he was done eating, Yang would perform a yin-yang check to examine his attributes. Dong quickly finished his meal and stood face to face with Yang, ready for his checkup. Yang told him to wear a new school uniform first, since his old clothes had been burned. Dong heeded his words and asked him when they would start checking his attributes. Suddenly, Yang activated his magic, saying that they were going to start at once. Floating before Dong was a half-red and half-blue object. Yang explained it to be a fire element detection rod. Dong was to hold the blue side with his left hand and the right side with his right hand. Yang would then use his own fire element to stimulate the energy in Dong's body. Dong did as he was told and instantly felt a heat flow rushing into his body. He was amazed with how comfortable he felt with it. Yang was shocked and Dong noticed, telling him he was free to call him a genius. Yang told him he was a genius, but only a genius at being a natural waste. He explained that in all his years as a yin-yang master, this was the first time he had met a person whose yin and yang attributes were completely balanced. Dong didn't know what was wrong with that. Apparently, a yin-yang balance was considered excellent for ordinary people, but it was the exact opposite for yin-yang masters. The yin-yang of the human body could be divided into many types of ratios, ranging from 5 to 5 and 4 to 6, all the way to 1 to 9 in proportion. The higher the ratio the easier it was to form a yin-yang crown, and the faster was its cultivation speed, meaning that 2 to 8 and 1 to 9 were considered equivalent to a genius. This meant that Dong's yin-yang balance would cause his cultivation speed to be extremely slow, especially if he cultivated double attributes. Yang informed him that if he was unable to form a yin-yang crown before he turned 18, he would never have a chance again in his life. He assumed Dong had become demoralized, so he tried to comfort him by saying that he would still be able to shine in the bartending world, Dong stood there silently for a moment before loudly declaring that he was not going to give up. Yang was surprised. Not only was he more skilled than most senior bartenders, but he also had a strong will. Perhaps he was really able to turn waste into a treasure. He decided he was going to do his best to help him. After all, he wanted to repay Dong for his wine. Dong was fully determined to achieve his goal. His destiny was in his own hands, and even if his talent was not good enough, he was still going to make up for it with hundreds or even thousands of times the effort. A few days later, he was making his way into the Li Huo Academy. It was the day of the opening ceremony, so he had decided to get there early. All of a sudden, someone called out to him, asking if he was one of the current year's freshmen. The figure introduced himself as a first-year student of the Ding Fire Department and asked for Dong's identity. Hearing Ding Fire, Dong asked if he was a girl. 
The student felt offended and told him he was a pure man, asking if he should prove it by taking all of his clothes off. He wanted to know who had told Dong that the Ding Fire Department was only for girls. Suddenly, another student called out to him, addressing him as P. Su. He wanted revenge for their previous fight and said that he was going to beat him to death this time around. P. Su quickly ran to hide behind Dong, asking him to do a good deed by helping him out. P. Su lied to the student Carl, telling him Dong was his boss and that they would talk if he could beat him. P. Su claimed he was not scared of Carl, reminding him how he had humiliated him during the entrance exam. Carl told P. Su he didn't care about who Dong was. He would just beat up anyone who tried to protect P. Su along with him. He charged up his attack and dove at the pair. Dong had a feeling he would not be able to withstand the attack head on. He decided to instead try and block with his legs, since they were longer than Carl's arm and collided head on. Both of them were pushed back, and Dong accidentally hit P. Su. Carl slid back and stopped himself with his legs. He commended Dong's strength. He knew Carl was going to treat him like an enemy now. P. Su suggested that they should both attack him together, and Dong agreed. They both charged at Carl, and Dong tried to hit him with his hand. He blocked it, but P. Su slipped behind him and hit him in the groin. Carl shrieked in pain and called him a cheater. P. Su told him he shouldn't have bullied his master in the first place, and Dong should have let him know he was going to punch him once more. Before they could do anything, someone appeared behind them and held them by their heads. The man was pissed they were fighting on the school grounds, and on the first day on top of that. They turned around to take a look at him and felt a strong pressure emanating from him. He lined them up and gave them a scolding for their misdemeanor, telling them they were not going to be attending the opening ceremony and that he was going to punish them by making them run 20 laps around the playground. They tried objecting and putting the blame on each other, but he retorted by saying that the last one to finish would be punished with five extra laps. The three of them finally shut their mouths and agreed to his punishment. Just before they could start their labs, he reminded them he had forgotten to introduce himself and told them he was the teacher of their freshman class, Xia Tian. The three of them had a feeling their luck had run out that day. The three of them had completed their punishment and quickly became friends. Dong had told him about his winemaking skills and had made the both of them a drink. Pisu was amazed with his skills and kept praising him. Dong was glad, but told him to keep his voice down since they could get in trouble if the teachers heard them, and Carl reminded him that alcohol was forbidden in the academy. Someone had overheard their conversation and asked if Dong really had the best wine. She was annoyed with Tien for making a no-drinking rule and had not had a good drink for a long time herself. Just then, Tien coughed behind her and told her to behave in front of the students. She told him he was such a party pooper since she had finally got a chance to get close to the new students. The class had settled and the teachers introduced themselves. Tien was the homeroom teacher for the third flame department, while Chu Tian was the homeroom teacher for the fourth flame department. Chu Tian greeted them all with a wink and Dong and Pi Su were shocked. Tien began the roll call starting with the third flame department. He told them to answer him loudly when he called their name. One by one, they answered their attendance, and he moved on to the fourth flame department. The first roll he called out was Dong, which was surprising since he had already answered in the previous department's roll call. The class was confused and assumed it was a mistake. Tien hushed them, saying there was no mistake. The academy was actually trying out a new dual flame cultivation, and Dong was its first student. The students wondered if that meant he had a balanced yin-yang, which was usually not able to cultivate. Tian shut their gossiping and continued with the roll call. He then told them it was time for their first lesson, which was going to be the basic knowledge of sorcerers with him being one of them. There were five lines of characters representing the five attributes and orientations of their five-element continent as well as each attribute's yin-yang. These five lines were Eastern 1 Saint 2 and Wood, Southern 3 RD 4 the Fire, Central 5 the 6 the Earth, Western 7th is 8 the metal and Northern 9, the 10 the water. As suggested by their names, every attribute had its optimum living conditions and directions in their continent and was the reason behind the formation of the five major empires. Different levels of sorcerers had different titles ranging from apprentice and bachelor to celestial masters and deities. The attribute they possessed did not matter. All that mattered in their goal to becoming a yin-yang master was the yin-yang crown. Tian signaled Xiu Tian two of them activated their crowns. Tian had a fire attribute phoenix and Chu Tian had a water attribute dragon. Pi Su cried out in amazement. Both him and Dong were focusing their full attention towards them. Lawton explained that a yin-yang crown was composed of a crown star and a crown diadem. Half a star was one level and ten levels would equal one diadem. The higher the number of diadems, the stronger the sorcerer was. In essence, yin-yang crowns were the source of every sorcerer's power. Dong remembered the dean telling him about this. Lawton told them that this was their first lesson and they could start discussing anything related to the topic. He then addressed Dong and told him to follow him to his office. 
He had been barely able to run the laps in the morning, and it finally made sense now since he came through favors without any exams. He had no idea what was going on in the dean's mind since he had also asked Qian to do his best to train Dong. He was not pleased in having to waste his efforts on an idiot like Dong. He pulled out two crystals. Dong asked him what they were, but Tian said he didn't need to know. He told him that it would help him accelerate his cultivation as a yin-yang master and told him to sit on the futon. He then made him close his eyes and place both of his hands on his knees. He had to relax his body and sit still no matter how he felt. Tian placed and fused the two pieces of ground crystals on Dong's forehead. Dong suddenly felt two flows of energy exploding in his body as if they were going to burn him to death. A faint fishy smell was continuously emitting from his body. The impurities inside him were being rapidly purified under the effects of the yin-yang flames. Two stars began to gradually appear on his forehead and converged into a crown star. He opened his eyes and Tian told him that he was now a level 1 third fourth film apprentice, but now he could only rely on himself to cultivate the crowns. Dong thanked him, but Tian told him it was the dean's request, so he should thank him instead. He then directed him to go back to his dorm and feel the changes inside him. Dong instead headed for the dean's room where he was talking to someone. He told the man he would keep the union's proposal under consideration. The man told him he had to report to the president and asked if he wanted to put away the scroll. Yang declined his offer, saying that no one was going to enter his room anyways. After the two of them had left, Dong arrived with a specially prepared cocktail for him. His skills were not what they used to be in his current condition, but he still wanted to thank him for helping him. He asked if Yang was there, but no one answered. He figured he should just put it on his desk, but before he could leave, he spotted the scroll. An energy was emitting from it, and he was curious what it was. It felt like something was calling him. He slowly approached the scroll and touched it. Suddenly, a bright flash appeared, and a light beam burst in from the sky. He cursed under his breath, but before he could do anything, he was transported to another land. There was lava all around him, and it felt so hot like he was being devoured by the heat. He had no idea where he was. He cried out for help, thinking he was going to die. The glass of wine slipped from his hand and evaporated into the hot air. Its scent reached a mysterious woman who had red hair and was wearing red clothes. She was intrigued by it. Dong was unable to bear the heat any longer. His blood was about to dry out and he would be roasted to death. The magma was causing him severe pain. He wondered if his current life was going to end like this. Suddenly, he stopped feeling hot. The heat seemed to have been cut off. A huge amount of energy appeared in front of him. On top of it, something seemed to be appearing out of a rose. It was the red-haired woman. She looked down at him. It was the first time he saw her and she looked beautiful. A drop of his wine was floating next to her. She used her abilities to taste it and was impressed. She asked him what it was. Dong zoned out in awe at her beauty but quickly came back to his senses. He told her it was a kind of wine. She was surprised, saying that she had tasted human wine before, but it had never tasted so good. Dong was confused and asked her if she was not human. She chuckled and put her hand under the lava but nothing happened to her. The lava changed shape, becoming a droplet, and started floating above her hand. She asked him if humans could do what she had just done. Dong was shocked. She told him not to be surprised, since it was just a part of her power. There were apparently a lot of things in this world that the humans were unaware of. They had been in a peace pact, each living in their own space the way they liked. She then came back to the topic at hand, asking him why his wine was different from the others. He told her it was not an ordinary wine, but a cocktail that he had concocted himself, he was the only one capable of making it in the human world. It was a special blend of vodka, Cointreau, almond brandy, pomegranate puree, and lemon juice. He called it the Midnight Sunshine, an impossible beauty. According to him, it could intoxicate anyone, making them confused or even disappointed. If she could still taste the warmth after going through all these feelings, then she would be its rightful owner. The woman was impressed by his words, saying she might have just felt what he said. She even told him his story might have been more beautiful than the cocktail. Dong asked her where he was and who she was. She said it had been a long time since he had last seen a human being and could not fathom how he had arrived here. It was the center of the earth and her name was Li Yan, meaning flame. Dong, on the other hand, bluntly told her that the name did not suit her. It sounded wild and violent, but she was none of that. Yan told him to not judge a book by its cover. Besides, she reminded him she was not human. He had never seen her wild and violent side, so he would not understand the meaning of her name. All the underground creatures called her the Yan Queen. She told him she liked his cocktail, so she would make an exception for him and let him call her by her name. Dong was still confused about the situation and asked what she meant by the center of the earth and underground creatures. She chuckled and used her powers to lift him into the air. He started freaking out, but she calmed him, saying that nothing would hurt him without her permission. She pointed out that they were at the highest point of the center and he could see everything from there. They were actually on the 18th floor of the underground, known as the Earth Core Lake. 
Not many humans were aware of its existence. In fact, the planet was divided into two parts, the surface and the underground. The humans lived in the surface world while a group of creatures resided in the underground. They were different from humans. There were a total of 18 layers in the underground. The more the underground creatures went up, the weaker they would become, and she was the only one in the earth core lake. He asked her if that made her the most powerful being among them all. She shrugged, saying she didn't know, but that whenever she occasionally visited the human world, she would become prone to danger. Dong told her she was so strong, asking why she would still be afraid, but she refused to tell him why, saying it was a secret while addressing him as a child. Dong asked her to stop calling him a child. His name was Dong. She teased him, saying she would then call him Little Dong. He tried to get her to stop, but she continued making up silly names for him until he finally agreed on Little Dong. She then asked him how he came to this place, since he must have already guessed not everyone could get there. He told her he had no idea. He had opened a scroll and was swallowed by five rays of light. Before he knew it, he had ended up here. Yan deduced it might have been a teleportation scroll, and if it could send him thousands of miles into the depths of the underground, its magic power must have been really strong. He didn't know what a magic scroll was and asked her if he could get back. She thought about it for a moment and proposed a deal. Dong asked her what kind of deal, told him living on the 18th floor in the underground was really lonely, but she couldn't leave easily. He asked her what she wanted from him, told him to just bring wine to her often and tell her stories of his world. In return, she would send him back to his world. But if his wine ever turned out to not be good, then she might throw him into the core lake. Dong agreed to her conditions. She told him he must have been a yin-yang master as well and asked to take a closer look at his abilities and see if there was something she could help him with. Dong was amazed with her scent. It was a special fragrance with the purest smell of fresh air. There was even a bit of moist plant fragrance in it. She inspected him and found his balanced yin-yang. This was the first time she had seen anyone with a balanced yin-yang with dual flames. This made her even more interested in him. She asked him if humans had a balanced yin-yang physique too. Dong asked her if a balanced yin-yang wasn't considered the worst attribute and that he needed to work 32 times harder than everyone else to achieve it. Yan lost her composure for a moment, shaking the ground behind her. She apologized to him and explained that he had made her a little angry when he said that. She herself was also a balanced yin-yang with dual flames, so she could never imagine it to be the worst attribute. She explained to him that one side alone just wouldn't work. If he wanted to fully understand the power of an attribute, he must have both the yin and yang. This meant that having a balanced yin-yang would actually make you the strongest yin-yang master. Dong told her that he couldn't even condense a yin-yang crown. Yan said he could cultivate it here. She would give him three hours. There was plenty of fire and energy there to make up for his lack of cultivation speed. She told him he could start the same day, but he declined. He had to go back or else everyone would be worried if he disappeared. She understood and agreed to send him back, but she told him to not tell anybody about what had happened. She conjured a bright red rose and gave it to him telling him to just touch his heart and call her name whenever he wanted to find her. She finally bid him goodbye, telling him she was looking forward to his great wine the next day. He touched the rose and was instantly transported back to the academy. He wondered if he had been dreaming. Jan might have just been the fairy in his dream. He put his hand near his chest and felt her energy. He realized it had not been a dream. Everything was real, including her. Back in the academy, Tian was complaining to Yang about how he could let Dong enter and leave his place at his will. Yang told him it was not the time to talk about these things, and they needed to find Dong. Right at that moment, Dong entered the room, calling for Dean Yang. Tian looked really irritated, telling him he really had the nerve to come back. Yang told him to stop scaring him. Dong apologized, saying he may have accidentally damaged his scroll. Yang said it was fine. As long as he was safe and sound, anything else didn't matter. However, he needed to pay attention in the future. Dong presented him the cocktail he had made for him as an apology for what he had done. Yang was pleased to see a new cocktail and asked to try it right away. Dong told him it was called the Lady in Pink. It gave the gentleness of water, but also the passion of fire. Yang remembered he had to ask Dong where he had been teleported. Dong lied, saying he had been teleported into the woods outside the city. The next day, their class was being held outside Li Huo City. Tian informed the class that the third flame department and the fourth flame department would be having their lessons separately. The third film department would be running around the city, while the fourth flame department would be Ju dead by teacher Chu Tian. Pisu told Jaden that his class was going to suffer since the city was not small. Tian then called out students, one from the third flame and the other from the fourth flame department. The two of them were girls, and the present laws had been specially set up for boys, so he asked them to switch. One of them stepped forward saying she didn't want to switch. She was a student of the third flame department, so she had a right to participate in the class, Surprisingly, Tian agreed without any arguments. The third flame department started their run. 
Pisu was annoyed he had to run with them. Dong asked him if Ju Gui was. Pisu told him that she was the first freshman to be admitted into their department. It was said that she was a one, nine third flame, but she was also way too manly. Suddenly, someone tugged on his shoulder. He turned around and saw Ju. She menacingly told him that if she ever heard him spread rumors about her again, she would burn down his hair. Before he could do anything, she had started attacking him with her flames. Pisu asked her if she was crazy, attacking her own classmate like that. She had decided that she would have to teach him a lesson so that he would speak politely in the future. Dong told Pisu to watch out. Pisu already knew that she was a level 5 apprentice and quickly activated his abilities to block her attack. Suddenly, Dong intervened, stopping her attack and telling her that she had done enough. He told her to get lost. He wouldn't let her bully his brother. Pisu told him to forget it since she was a level 5 apprentice, so even if both of them were to team up with Carl, they still wouldn't be able to fight her. Dong told him he couldn't just give up like that, but Pisu told him not to worry about it since it was his fight. He would defeat her with his own power once he improved his yin-yang skills. Ju stopped, saying she would wait for him until he was ready. Dong asked Pisu if he was all right. The two of them headed back to catch up with their class. Once the run had been completed, Carl told Dong that his physical strength had improved a lot. Jordan wasn't surprised, since he had been constantly improving his strength. All of a sudden, Tian started shouting that they were not allowed to rest. They had to sit up straight, close their eyes, and start cultivating their crowns. Apparently, one's mind was the most sensitive when their physical strength was exhausted. He would help them notice and feel the existence of the third flame magic. Their job was to absorb it attentively and strive to become a level one apprentice as soon as possible. He then informed Dong and Pi Su that it was not a suitable time for both of them to cultivate. For the dual flame cultivation, there were only two points suitable. When was the evening and the other was early morning, when light and darkness were balanced. For Pi Su's fourth flame magic, the only suitable time was at night. Later that night, Dong was realizing how he would not be able to condense his magic power at all since the class time was never suitable for him. But he knew he still needed to practice, and there was a place perfect for that. He went to the private bartending room and prepared a special cocktail, adding all the ingredients with extreme precision. He shook it for 180 shakes per minute. The cocktail would only be ready once it became milky white and slightly yellow. It had a lower alcohol content, and it was more suitable for women to drink. His preparations to meet Yan were complete, and he touched his heart to be teleported to her. The energy inside his heart released, and he got teleported to the underground. Facing him was an enormous tree with bright red leaves. He wondered what that place was. Yan called out to him and asked what he thought of her dress. He told her it was really pretty. She explained that the center of the earth looked the same everywhere, so she had transformed the place to match the appearance of his world. Although it was not as real as the human world, it was at least more vivid than the monotonous lava. She asked him if the bottle was for her. He gladly told her it was, and that he had been afraid it was going to evaporate so he didn't pour it into a glass. She thanked him and took the bottle. She opened the lid and sipped it. Dong was secretly admiring her beauty. She told him it seemed to be different from the last one he had made and wanted to know its name. He told her it was called the White Moon and that it tasted sweet and slightly sour, just like the moonlight under the other night dew. Yan liked its name, praising how unique it was, and told him to also use a glass next time. She liked it better in the glass and he did not need to worry about it evaporating. She then informed him he could start cultivating while she would enjoy the rest of the bottle of the White Moon. She then bade him farewell, saying she would see him tomorrow. There were apparently no restrictions on a balanced yin-yang while in the center of the earth. He was also able to absorb ten times quicker than only the ground. Dong was really thankful to Yan and swore that he would not let her down. A year passed since he had begun his training. Yan had noticed his efforts. Impressed, she told him that he had brought a different cocktail for her every day and had never let her down. In fact, she could actually see his efforts from the red lotus seal she had placed on his chest, he never wasted a single minute and had become a level four apprentice in just one year. She wondered if he was really that thirsty for power. Dong truthfully told her he was, since nothing in that world was without power. He had finally got an opportunity to become stronger and did not want to give it up. She was impressed with his honesty and reminded him how she had been drinking his cocktails for so long. So in return, she could teach him something if he didn't mind his classmates judging him. Yan materialized two flames and told him that they may greatly benefit his future cultivations. It was his reward for his year-long bartending service. She asked him if he was also feeling the energy of these flames. They were also yin and yang flames, but they were much purer than any magic in the human world, the flames she herself used. The golden flame was called the sacred fire of the Yuan Yang's 43rd year out of a 60-year cycle, while the black flame was called the spiritual fire of the dark moon's 54th year on the 60-year cycle. With these flames, 
he would have the same magic as her. Dong could not believe what he was hearing. She reminded him that it had its cons too. If he was to use these flames, then he would have to give up on the magic power he had accumulated throughout the year. As a result, his magic power would greatly be reduced. She knew he had his graduation test the next day. He had been working hard for the whole year in order to prove himself, so he had to think about it carefully. Dong, on the other hand, immediately told her he was ready. A qualitative change was definitely worth a year of hard work. Besides, he was secretly happy that he would get to have the same flame as her. Yan was amazed with his willpower. She told him he would not regret the decision he had made. She used her magic to put him to sleep for some time. Deep inside, she was having a lot of thoughts about him. He really had not disappointed her, and she was becoming more and more interested in him. She felt like she didn't want to see him anymore since she had become so used to his company, and that was something she shouldn't have done in the first place. She wouldn't be able to drink his cocktail again, but she had to do this. If only he had hesitated and disappointed her, she could have forced him out of there. It was a strange feeling. She still hoped she would be able to taste his fine wine again. She had never felt that way before. She wanted to hope for something, but she was afraid at the same time. She fused the flames inside him, wondering how long he could persist. She had never been afraid of something like this before. She told him to listen carefully. The third flame was Yang fire, while her sacred fire was an extreme Yang fire. The fourth flame was a Yin fire, while her spiritual fire of the dark moon was an extreme Yin fire. Her flames were the kings of all fires, and they had the power to destroy the world. Their fusion was sure to bring a huge change in him, but he had to remember not to show it to anyone unless it was his last resort. He needed to learn to hide his strength in order to survive. Dong heeded her words and slowly opened his eyes. Flames were revolving around him. Yan said he shouldn't be surprised since he now possessed the kings of fire. No flame would be able to hurt him now. Dong didn't know how he could thank her for such a great gift. Yan told him all he had to do was just keep making her more delicious cocktails. It also imprinted the divine method of yin-yang in his mind so he could restrict those flames. But he had to be careful, since it could also embody the purest power of yin-yang from the extreme dual flames inside his own body. He had to remember to only use it in a time of crisis. Dong thanked her and returned to the human world. He had decided he would work even harder and make her proud. The next day, all the first-year students had assembled in the academy field for the final grade test. Tian was supervising the test, and he began by introducing the contents of the exam. There were no rules, and students could board the test platform by giving their name in class. They had to activate their magic power and pour it on the test monument. It would gauge their abilities by displaying their crown stars. The instructors would then use the total number of crown stars as their final assessment. To pass the test, a student needed to at least be a level 2 apprentice. A level 3 apprentice would be considered excellent. The academy was going to implement the reward and punishment system according to their performance. Tian bid everyone good luck and officially began the test. Zhu was the first one to stand on the platform. She held out her name and class, and then poured her magic into the monument. It displayed three and a half stars, showing her to be a level 7 apprentice. Yang and Tian were impressed with her. Next came Carl, who had reached a level 4 status. Following him was Pi Su, who was also a level 4. Both of them passed with excellent grades. One by one, the students took the test. Most of them passed as a level 3 apprentice. Finally, it was Dong's turn to enter the platform. Carl and Pi Su were cheering for him. Yang was anxious about what was going to happen. This was the first time the students were seeing anyone with dual flames. He poured his dual flame magic into the monument. It displayed him having a level 1 third, as well as a level 1 fourth flame. Everyone was shocked. Tian officially announced his result deeming him as failed. The first year's assessment had been completed, and it was time for the second year's assessment. Dong was sad and Tian told him to come with him to his office. He asked Dong if he was aware of the Academy's rules. It had been a full year and he had not shown any progress at all. The Academy had no choice but to dismiss him. Dong started begging him to give him another chance. He promised he would pass in the next exam. Tian declined his plea saying that there were no second chances. After all, he had a balanced yin-yang, so he was not really suitable to cultivate as a yin-yang master. He ordered him to pack up his things and he would send him off tomorrow. There were probably other jobs that would suit him more. Another teacher, Liu Jun, started saying that Tian didn't have to waste any time with an idiot like him. He had to just quickly let him go so they could assess the remaining grades. Tian told him to mind his words. He was not allowed to call any student an idiot. Jun started mocking Dong even more, calling him a rare idiot for his balanced yin-yang. Yang hushed both of them and told Dong it was the rule of the academy so he could not do anything about it. Dong apologized to him, saying he had put him in a bad position. Just then, someone entered their office, a student barged in, apologizing to the teachers and deans for bothering them. 
He had heard about the student with a balanced yin-yang dual flame and wanted the teachers to give him a second chance to cultivate for another year. All of Dong's friends were there for him, and he could not express how much their support meant. The student told Tian that they could be flexible with the rules. Dong's cultivation was unlike their own, so it was normal that its cultivation would be different. Tian silenced him, saying he was just a student and that he had no right to interfere with any decisions of the academy. He told all the students to get out and teacher Jun joined him. The student, Zhu Tian, argued that Dong might be able to do well in the next school year, but nobody listened. Zhu Tian was disappointed and started heading back. He told Zhu that he had tried. Tian began to formally announce Dong's expulsion. Suddenly, Yang intervened, saying that Zhu Tian was right. Dong was allowed to do what he wanted with his life. Jun tried to stop him, but he didn't listen. He told Jaden that he had two choices. Either he could leave the academy, or he could participate in the next academic year as an auditor. He didn't need to pass any assessments since he wouldn't be considered a student of the academy. He would have the option to leave the academy any time. In case he managed to pass the assessments, he could be reconsidered into the academy. Dong took him up on his offer at once. Pisu and Carl were glad they could still stay together until graduation. Yang then told them it was time for them to leave. However, Dong had to take any punishments with his friends since they had come here to plead for him. Jay Dan didn't mind and thanked Yang for the opportunity. Outside the office, Dong expressed his gratitude to Zhu Tian. Zhu Tian said he should be thanking Zhu instead of him. He told him that it was the first time he had heard of a balanced yin-yang physique, and Dong had to work really hard if he wanted to achieve something. He bade him good luck and went off to finish his punishment. Dong approached Zhu and thanked her for worrying about him. She told him he didn't have to thank her since she was just looking out for a classmate. Besides, she already knew that he didn't fail because he was lazy. She had seen him running and exercising each and every day on the field. She had done her part, and it was now up to him to work even harder and become a yin-yang master. She wished for them to face each other in the future and took her leave. Pi Su thought she might not have been that bad after all. He had started catching feelings for her. Carl shut him up, reminding him how he had been planning to get revenge on her each day. Dong wondered who the senior student was. Pi Su was surprised he didn't know about the star of their academy. Three years went by and Dong continued training hard. He could clearly see the extreme flames in his eyes. The yin-yang divine lock he had received from Yan had been a great help to him. It could control its own attribute with its own mind, and it could also control the amount of power to be released, along with the degree of its strength. He remembered Yan telling him that he could condense his crown at her place that night. Before leaving, he brought Yang his drink for that day. Just as he was about to leave the office, Yang stopped him, saying it had been four years since he had come to the academy, and he had made him cocktails every day. Yet he had not been able to fulfill his promise to Dong, he told Dong he could not let him ruin his future because of his selfish request. He asked Dong to pack his things so that he could take him to the bartender's jeweled right after the semester was over. Dong politely declined, saying that he had made his own decision and he was going to stay. Yang tried to convince him by saying that his friends were going to condense their yin-yang crown soon and get into the best institutions using the dean's recommendation. They would leave and he would become lonely. He was still young and could choose to do something else with his life. Dong wasn't listening and thanked him for his concern saying that he was going to wait until the end of the semester. Yang was annoyed and tried to make him come back, but he ran off. He had soon arrived back underground and started working on his cultivation. Yan told him that this was the most important moment in his early stages of cultivation. No matter how he felt afterwards, he could never go back on his decision. She told him to sit down, cross his legs, and start. The yin-yang crown was a symbol of a yin-yang magician while also representing the magician's strength. To condense a crown one could only rely on their own strength. The human body's resilience was limited and would start being affected by a strong destructive effect after a certain level of concentration. Only at the tenth level of apprenticeship could the constitution of a human bear the force of its own elements. As such, when the yin-yang magician's cultivation reached the tenth level, his body would no longer be able to withstand any more elemental energy, and it was necessary to condense the crown to achieve further improvement. In this way, the yin-yang crown could be seen as the source of all magic powers of a yin-yang magician. Despite the continuous improvement of the human body, along with the base improvement of the magician's cultivation, their cultivation speed would greatly decrease and could even backfire. Ordinary magicians would start to compress and condense their own magic power into the original yin-yang crown. As a dual attribute magician, he not only needed to compress and condense his magic, but also balance the yin and yang of his own attributes— in his case, he had the extreme flames which she had placed inside him, and they were much more difficult to control than ordinary third and fourth flames. 
Normally, having only one of these flames would be manageable, but Dong was trying to compress both of them, which meant that they had to be fused together first. The problem was that they both produced a repulsive force against each other. Dong felt as if his chest had exploded, he felt as if his whole body was about to burn, and he could sense his heart's rhythm increasing. She knew she had to intervene. If the collision between the flames went on any longer, it could cause irreversible damage to him. Suddenly, the two extreme flames that had been fighting each other moments ago stopped. Dong felt something break inside him. The yin-yang energy had started cultivating. Yan could only watch and wish for the best. In the past four years, he had never shown any slack, nor had he ever let her down. She tried to judae the extreme flames. She chanted a spell and both the flames converged into a single point. They changed shape and formed a black and white crown. Despite the sacred fires being the most polar opposites, their nature was no different from each other. Yan told him she had simply helped him form the crown based on his own original powers. Dong expressed his gratitude, and she told him to call her his teacher from then on. Dong said he couldn't call her that because it would imply her being old. To him, she was still young and beautiful. Yan agreed to let him call her as he saw fit, since she actually didn't care about any of that. Deep inside, he knew there was no way he could treat her as his teacher, since he would then no longer be able to speak his heart out to her. She turned around and asked him why he looked sad, and he told her he was still nothing more than a first-level student and had a long way to go. She patted him on the head, telling him to not be so hard on himself, or else he might one day break. Just like the yin and yang in his body, he had to remember to couple strength and gentleness. She said she had some good news to cheer him up. From now on, his cultivation process wouldn't be limited to a specific time. He didn't need to rely on his mind to cultivate the elements. His yin-yang crown had a huge force of attraction that would increase the speed of his cultivation process in the future. He no longer needed to wait for the evening or early morning to cultivate. It would continue to take place at all times. For now, Yan told him that he only needed to focus on practicing the control of the yin-yang vortex as well as their output. Once that was done, he could freely choose to use both types of magic at any given moment. For this, he had to have a strong control over both of them, which could only be done through practice. Her explanation was finished, and she asked him to stretch out his hand for two gifts. Dong tried to politely decline, saying that he had already received enough help from her. Yan told him they were of no use to her, and he could keep them anyways. It would also save her from a lot of worries. She placed something in his hand and Dong wished he could hold it forever. All of a sudden he felt an incredible pain soar through his body. She was impressed by his sheer will in controlling the strength of his grip in order to not hurt her. He had not doubted her intentions for a single moment, even in extreme pain and was afraid of hurting her. He had never once disappointed her in the last four years. The item had been absorbed into Dong's yin-yang crown through his hand. All the energy from his body had been drained. He was feeling sleepy and wondered where he was. Yan whispered about how she had been forced to pay him back for the four years' worth of wine, and this time he was going to owe her instead. She playfully teased him for being so different from all the other humans she had met in the human world. Dong woke up and realized he was still in the Earth's core. His body didn't hurt anymore, and all his magic seemed to have been replenished. He looked at his palms and saw a sun and moon sign on each of them respectively. Yan noticed him awake and came over to tell him that this was her gift. He asked her what it was and she told him it was his future. Dong was confused, so she elaborated by telling him a story. Originally, the 18th floor of the underground used to be controlled by two fire kings. One of them had been formed from the sacred fire of Yuan Yang, known as the Flame King, while the other one was the dark flame demon formed by the spiritual fire of the Dark Moon. Despite being twins that were born and had cultivated at the same time, they both opposed each other due to their attributes. They both possessed unmatched strength capable of destroying the world and would be engaged in constant wars. They would fight non-stop every day, and all the creatures around them had to choose a side to stand on. Casualties were a normal occurrence, and the vitality of the underground was slowly getting damaged. One day, a red lotus at the core of the earth materialized and condensed the being which was now Yan. She defeated both the Flame King and the Dark Flame Demon and brought peace to the underground. No one had to worry about losing their lives in the war anymore, and the creatures would then go on to live a happy life, her existence had been a consequence of their constant fighting, which was affecting the balance of the underground. This was where Dong came in. The two fire seeds inside his body had not been created by her, but from the two fire kings, and were their natural flames. She had used the fire of her own red lotus to refine their souls, but as a result, her own flame had also been absorbed by them, which changed the source of her own fire. The patterns on his hands were their fundamental origin, which was all that had been left of the kings after she had finished refining them. They contained the memories of all their former powers. In other words, the demonic spirits were not energy, but memories of the two great kings. The spirits on his palms had recorded all their skills, 
which included baseline techniques, sure kill techniques, and even ultimate techniques, with all of them being top level. This was her final gift to him. Dong looked sad and asked how he could ever repay her for everything she had done for him. He wished he had not accepted such a great gift. She said she was obviously not giving it to him for free. Humans could usually live to be 80 to 100 years old, with powerful ones living as long as 200 years. She told him he had to brew wine for her for the next 99 years. Dong proudly claimed that he would have become her personal bartender if she hadn't given him anything. But she retorted by saying that she didn't want him to be her exclusive bartender and that he should also let others enjoy his winemaking skills. Flattered with his commitment, she reduced his sentence to 95 years, saying that he had already completed four years. She then reminded him that the skills he had been given were not easy to use. He would need to achieve a certain magic level before he could be able to stimulate the memory of the two kings' techniques. For now, he could only use one basic technique of each king. However, even their basic techniques were more powerful than most signature techniques, and he had to be extremely careful when using them. It had been three days since Dong had arrived there, and the academy had already noticed his absence. It was the day of the fourth Thethir assessment, and it was time for him to surprise them all. Dong returned to the academy. He had come back just in time for the beginning of the exam. Suddenly, Carl and P. Su were holding on to him. They asked where he had been all that time. They had assumed he had gone missing, and Tien as well as the dean had been searching for him. Dong told them he would talk about it later and asked them if they had made a breakthrough yet. He also wanted to know when their turn was going to arrive for the final assessment. Carl told him it was just a little longer. They had made a breakthrough, but they had to leave the academy right after the end of that school year. Dong cheered them up, saying that a breakthrough was always a good thing. He had been training in the academy all this time, but he was always free to leave, so he could also go to whichever school they chose. He reminded them how he could fare well in Ant City thanks to his bartending skills. The two started talking about their future plans with him, and Tien suddenly interrupted them. It was time for the fourth year's exams. All the faculty had assembled to watch. Tien noticed Dong and asked him where he had been all this time. He could not go breaking the academy rules just because he was an auditor. He told Dong to come to his office after the exam to receive his punishment. Dong didn't argue, and P. Su started talking about how mean Tian was. Dong said he was actually a good person, but he was just strict with everyone. He then apologized to Yang for his misdemeanor, and Yang quickly accepted his apology, saying he was glad Dong was safe. Dong wanted to show him his newfound abilities, eager to make him proud. Tian announced the rules. The students were to stand on the stage one by one and report their names and classes to him. They would then release their magic power into the monument, and the faculty members would give them a score based on their level. Carl went first. He was able to condense a yin-yang crown and turned out to be level 11. Next came P. Su from the 4th Fire Department. He was also level 11. All the other students along with the teachers were impressed. Both of them passed with an excellent grade. After an hour, the fourth-year assessment had been completed. Dean Yang gave a closing speech and began to dismiss the students. Just then, Dong came forward and told him he wanted to do the assessment. Tian tried to stop him, saying he was just an auditor and he didn't need to embarrass himself. Dong reminded him how he had already failed to pass three years ago and had nothing to lose. If he could make a breakthrough right now, then he would still have a chance to officially graduate from the academy. Jun started mocking him, calling him a student without talent who didn't deserve to waste their time. He would probably just turn out to be a second or third level apprentice. It was impossible for him to become a real yin-yang master. He asked Tian how he would deal with the student interrupting the dean like that. Dong struck back at him, saying he had also been a member of the academy. He told Jun he should be ashamed of himself for being a professor and talking to him with such an attitude. He was not Dong's homeroom professor, so he was not qualified to reprimand him. Jun started shouting at him, but he retorted, asking him if he was even fit to be a professor. He wondered what level Jun was when he was 14 years old and said he would show him who was a real waste of time. Dong requested Tian to readmit him as a student if he managed to pass the assessment. Jun tried discouraging him, saying it would all just be in vain, but Dong didn't pay attention. He confidently walked up to the stage and chanted his magic. The yin-yang dual attribute crown appeared behind him, shocking everyone in the audience. It turned out he was actually a level 12 apprentice. Jun could not believe his eyes. Dong asked him what he had been able to do at his age. Jun started accusing him of cheating, saying he was going to check it for himself. Dong smugly told him to mind his words and actions. He then formally announced his request to be readmitted into the academy as a student once again. The students had no idea what was going to happen. Tian approached Yang, talking about how a fourth year with a dual fire attribute had managed to achieve an outstanding performance. He requested the dean to allow Dong to become an official student again. Yang exclaimed about how it was the first time he had seen a dual yin-yang fire attribute crown. The results of his efforts were clear. 
so he would allow him to become an official student of Lehuo Academy again. He announced the fourth tier assessment had come to an end. Dong was happy, but Carl and Pisu were overjoyed. The most powerful among them had turned out to be Dong. They teased him for not telling him about this sooner, planning to go celebrate at the bar at noon. Carl said he wanted to learn about wine mixing with Dong, and he accepted. Later, Dong came to Yang's office, asking if he wanted to talk about something. Yang looked disheartened and told him to sit down. He tried to come up with proper words to say to him. He had actually wanted to apologize to Dong for not caring about him all this time. For the last four years he had been mixing drinks for him and training alone, Yang had done nothing to repay any of his efforts. He had given up on Dong after his failure in the first academic year. He believed a balanced yin-yang attribute would never truly cultivate. He had probably been missing for the last few days, condensing his yin-yang crown alone. Yang regretted his actions and kept apologizing to Dong. Dong told him he didn't have to do any of this. He was the sole reason Dong was here today. He didn't know where he might have been if he hadn't brought him back to the academy, let alone be a yin-yang magician. He most likely would not have even had a chance to meet Yan. Yang was relieved to hear him say that and asked him what he had planned next. Dong wanted him to give him a chance to leave the academy. He wanted to officially graduate along with his fellow students and go to an advanced institution for further study. In that case, Yang told him he had two options. He presented him a promotion and a letter of recommendation. One of his options was to be directly promoted to one of the three high-level academies for fire magicians in their southern empire. The other one was to be recommended for admission to the Tiangan Academy, but it involved both risks and opportunities. Once he was able to gain a firm stand there, the future would be limitless for him. Dong asked him what the risks were. Yang told him it was the top elite academy in the continent. Even if he was to be recommended by their academy, he would still need to take the entrance exam. Only the top talents from various departments throughout the land were able to enter. Each student had only one chance to pass the entrance exam. The academy was not affiliated with any country and had been jointly founded by the five major empires. Dong figured the quality of teaching there must have been really high as the first place academy. Yang told him that its graduates were highly recognized by every country. At the same time, it also had many secrets of its own. Whether he can know those would depend on how far he would be able to go in the Tiangan Academy. Dong decided he would choose the second option. Yang already knew about his choice and told him Carl and Pi Su had also made the same decision. He told him to wait for a moment before presenting him with a storage bracelet. It was his gift to him. All he had to do was input the magic power of the third flame into it, and he would be able to open a portal into a separate dimension to store and access his items. It was able to store 10 cubic meters worth of items and would help his travel become much easier. He had also left 500 gold coins inside the bracelet for his travel expenses, Dong was taken aback and told him he couldn't accept such valuable gifts. Yang told him he didn't need to worry since he had many of the same types of items and they were not really valuable to him. It was just a small repayment for his four years of winemaking and he only wished for Dong to remember Lihuo Academy when he became famous. Dong still felt ungrateful, so Yang told him to make one last cocktail for him. This cheered him up and he quickly went on to prepare it. Two months later, all the preparations had been done and Dong just needed to meet up with P. Su and Carl before leaving the academy. He bought a few items from the market in order to prepare some gifts for Yan since he wouldn't be able to see her while he was traveling. On his way back, a little boy stopped him asking if he was Dong. He had been told to give him a letter. Dong didn't know the boy and wondered what the letter was about. He tried asking him about it, but the boy had disappeared. He opened it and was shocked. The letter told him to go to the woods outside the city to save Carl and Pai Su. He quickly hurried there and called out to them. No one responded. He wondered if someone was pranking him. He tried calling out again, and Jun emerged behind him. He had been waiting for Dong for over two months. He wanted to get his revenge for the humiliation he had faced during the assessment. Meeting him would have been difficult once he had left the academy, so he decided he would call him out to the forest. Tian had made his disciples humiliate him, and he was unable to raise his head anymore. Moreover, Tian would always be more successful than him, achieving his triple crown and receiving favors from the dean by staying with all the major talents. He harbored resentment for both of them. He told Jaden that not he would not let every genius live peacefully. He hated him for being a Tian student and told Dong to blame himself. Jun leapt at Dong, cursing at him. He knocked him back with his magic. Dong got up and tried reasoning with him. He told him that the things that had happened between him and Tian didn't have anything to do with Dong. It was no wonder that Chu Tian would not even look at him. Jun didn't care. He just wanted to kill him and send his body to Tian. As long as he did that, he would be able to confront Tian. Dong let out a chuckle and Jun became nervous, seeing him still be able to stand after being hit. Dong told him that the gap between him and Tian was gigantic. 
He was not willing to work hard and all he did was blame others and make fun of them. In his eyes, Jun was nothing more than rubbish. He started activating his power. Jun knew something was wrong and he needed to prepare his king's edge sense in order to act quickly. A certain feeling of uneasiness was creeping up upon him by just looking at Dong. But before he could do anything, Dong was at arm's length with him and punched him in the face. Jun could not believe it. Dong told him he had lost and he was not capable of killing him. Jun said this was not possible since he was nothing more than a 13th level magician, while he was a 29th level 4th fire magician. He desperately tried to charge at Dong. Dong was annoyed, saying he didn't know when to give up. He activated his dark flame and pierced Jun's guts, telling him to not act so recklessly. Jun was still unable to comprehend the situation. He died, still resenting Dong and Tian. Dong stood there for a moment before fainting and falling to the ground. Dong opened his eyes and found himself back in the underground. Yan asked him if he was feeling better. Dong asked her how he handed up here, and she told him that he had overexerted himself and inflicted too much damage to his source. All she did was put him in the Earth Core's lake to warm him up. He had been really lucky she had found him. He had lost control over his emotions and had ended up killing Jun. She told him he needed to improve his combat power as soon as possible. He had done Jun a favor by killing him. If he had used his full abilities since the beginning, Dong would not have been able to kill him, even with the power of his extreme flame. Dong was worried he might have to face consequences from the academy for killing Jun. Yan told him that his body had been completely burned by the spiritual fire of the dark moon and that no traces were left, but he had to remember to be strong or else the next one to die would be him. She advised him to stay there until his departure for the Central Plains Empire. He had nine days to practice the fierce sun's punch in the dark moon's claw technique. As long as he practiced, he would be able to acquire two more techniques equivalent to the evolution of each king. Therefore, he was required to practice his base techniques a thousand times during the nine days. There was no room for compromise. He needed to give up his sleep if it was required. This was the only way he would be able to protect himself in the future. Dong told her he would try his best, but he wanted to first go to the academy. He didn't want his teacher to worry about him going missing again. Ten minutes later, he returned with a finely made cocktail for Yan. She asked him if this was why he had actually gone back. She didn't know what she should do with him. He reminded her he still owed her 95 years of cocktail, so he couldn't just let it go. Yan was reluctant, but she accepted it and told him to go practice at the Red Crystal platform over on the center of the lake. She told him to keep his magic activated at all times in order to resist the temperature of the stone platform. He followed her instructions and began his training, continuously activating his abilities. He noticed that he was able to gather magic much faster than during his previous practice. He was also able to release it faster and the compression of his magic was more solidified. Yan told him he was wrong. He was still not able to correctly perform his techniques after two months. Dong was startled by her tone. She had never spoken to him in such a way before. She reminded him to fully concentrate on his form from the moment he activated the technique all the way to its usage. He tried again, asking her if he had done it right. She scolded him, saying that he had to mobilize every inch of his strength from the moment he was ready to make a move. Every time he tried, she kept on criticizing him. She started calling him names, saying that he should have been able to use the two basic techniques by now. Dong didn't take her criticisms to heart and focused himself on improving upon her instructions. Nine days went by and Dong was completely worn out. Yan told him that he had barely qualified, but he was now allowed to take a break. Dong told her it was time for him to return. She bade him a quick farewell, not showing any emotions. She actually cared for him too much and didn't want to see him get hurt again. She had not been able to do anything on that day and had never experienced that kind of heartache before. It was really painful, and she had realized how much he had meant to him. She didn't even know what she thought of him anymore. He was about to go to a strange place, and he only had his power to protect himself. She watched as he tried to make another glass of wine. The bottle slipped from his hand and shattered. The nine days of training had taken their toll on him. He looked disheartened. He didn't know what was going on and started crying. He didn't know what to do anymore. He picked up the bottle and stabbed his own hand with it. Jan was shocked. She wanted to ask him if it was worth it. He slowly picked himself up and continued making the glass of wine. Yan wondered if he was really her fated magic star. She didn't want to meet him anymore or else she would not be able to let him go in the future and things would only become more painful. Dong returned with the glass, calling it a blue Hawaii cocktail, and told her it was from his hometown. It was like the blue ocean, together with the waves of crushed ice and the sweetness of the juice, which felt like a whisper of the Hawaiian breeze. The white rum and blue-orange liqueur gave it a visual representation and sensational taste at the same time. Yan started to feel sore at her nose. She wondered if she was crying. She didn't even want to cry, but her throat still felt like it was blocked. She felt like she would not be able to sip it after seeing the price he had paid. She told him to go and continue his training and stood there with the glass, not knowing if she should drink it or not. 
The next day, she told him his training had been completed. With the two techniques and the blessing she had given him, he would now be able to protect himself in the human world. She bade him goodbye and vanished. He opened his eyes and felt a strange comfort. The scorching environment was giving him a refreshing feeling. His yin-yang vortex had become stronger compared to how it was nine days ago. He wondered where Yan was. He tried calling out to her, but she didn't respond. She wanted him to go back to the human world and focus on practicing his techniques while remembering to conceal his true strength with the yin-yang lock method. It was time for him to leave that place forever. His partners were searching for him at the academy. She used her magic to transport him back. Dong looked sad, but he had no idea how she felt. Back at the academy, Carl and Pai Su came knocking at his door, telling him it was time to leave. They were seeing him after a long time. Pai Su asked him why he looked so dirty and smelly, and Carl asked if he hadn't been taking regular baths. Dong told them he had been practicing the last few days, want to go downstairs and he would get everything ready to go. Pi Su asked him if he was going to keep wearing his school uniform. Dong didn't know what was wrong with that. The uniform was the only thing that he could wear. Pi Su told him that his dad had advised them to keep a low profile. It would be better if people didn't find out that they were yin-yang magicians. Pi Su had figured Dong had nothing else to wear, so he had prepared some new sets of clothes just in case. Carl teased him, saying a woman's intuition really was more delicate. Pai Su started chasing him, daring him to call him a woman again. After an hour, the three of them were ready to leave. They stood at the gate of Lihuo Academy, looking at it one last time. They had studied there for the past four years. Carl told Dong that they would return there in the future as the most powerful yin-yang magicians. They set off to the Central Kingdom through the public road of the Southern Flame. Carl was having road sickness. He told them they should have taken horses instead of the carriage. They would also have reached the Central Plains Empire by now. Pi Su told him that it was not safe to travel on horses, according to his dad. Dong told him that they were approaching the border of the Southern Empire in a little while. They reached the border where Starfire City was located and got into a hotel room. They were exhausted and glad they could finally be able to get a good night's sleep. Pi Su started discussing their desired route after crossing the border. They had two options, one of which was to go west and bypass the wind and frost mountains that extend through the three great empires. After they had passed the city of Binrong, in the middle of the empire's border, they would be able to reach the Central Plains Empire. They could then proceed north again to reach the Central Plains City. This route was easy, but they would need to walk at least 500 more miles. The other way was to go directly from Starfire City to the northeast, through the wind and frost mountains, and enter the territory of the Central Plains Empire. This road was much more dangerous, but they would be able to save a lot of time. He asked Dong and Carl for their opinions. Carl shouted that they should just go straight through the mountains without wasting any time. The demon beast lurking in the mountains were nothing more than low-level monsters. Professor Tian had taught them about those beasts, so they were not really a problem for him. Pi Su also chose the second option. It had been settled. Dong told them to go back to their rooms and get a good rest. Carl told them to go to another room since he didn't want to move for a single minute. It had been three days since Dong had last seen Yan. He figured he should prepare her another cocktail. He began preparing it precisely by adding all the ingredients. This time, he had prepared a colorful cocktail that he deemed perfect. He teleported to the Earth's core lake and searched for Yan. She was nowhere to be found. He tried calling out to her, but there was no reply. He could feel her presence and was able to teleport to the place, but she was not showing herself. He didn't know why she was hiding from him. Suddenly, the cocktail came out of the glass and went into the magma. Dong was being teleported back to the human world. He stood there silently not knowing what to say. She had received the wine from him, but she didn't want to taste it. She didn't want to get closer to Dong. If he ended up dying in the human world, she would feel the pain all over again. Better to suffer for a little while than to suffer continuously. She wanted both of them to go their own separate paths. She hoped he would forgive her. She wanted to see him succeed and become even more powerful. Back in the human world, the three of them set out to cross the wind and frost mountains. The three of them had managed to climb three peaks after walking for a whole day. If they kept going with this speed, they won't be able to pass through the wind and frost mountains in less than two days. Carl and Pai Su started arguing. Carl said that they were stopping too many times, and they should have already climbed the main peak by now. Pai Su told him to try and wait without eating when he was hungry. The three of them stopped again and prepared a meal. They made grilled meat using the supplies that were stored in Dong's storage bracelet. Pai Su was having trouble keeping the fire going, so Carl gave handed him the meat. He told him to eat while he tended the flames. He knew the fourth flame was not suitable for those type of things. Pisu hugged him, saying he was the best. He then asked Dong to prepare some cocktails for them. They were enjoying a life full of wine and meat. Suddenly they heard a howling sound coming from nearby. 
Dong told the others that he had seen a movement in the woods. The three of them stood up alert. A small wolf came up to them and started hissing. Carl told Dong it was a Qingmu wolf cub and should only be at the beginner level. Dong was confused how a wolf cub could be living here on the snowy mountains. It must have been separated by its family, probably because it was attracted to the smell of their meat. Pi Su told them he would take care of it. He gently approached the cub and threw it away with a menacing face. The cub came back annoyed and tears were running down its size. Pi Su was impressed with how fierce it was. All of a sudden, a gigantic wolf appeared behind him and swung its claws at him. Jaden tried to alert him, but the wolf was too fast. He activated his magic and rushed towards its attack. The two of them clashed. At the end, he was able to slash its paw. Carl asked P. Su if he was fine. They noticed that Dong had just used a single technique combo. He didn't stop there and charged at the wolf again. He had been actually using a continuous combo. He punched the wolf's paw and hissed out in pain. Carl and P. Su were amazed by his abilities. The wolves backed off but didn't run. The big wolf activated an ability that allowed it to heal its wounds. Both the wood type and the water type possessed healing techniques, according to Pai Su. The wolf let out a loud growl and the earth started shaking. Dong realized something was about to emerge from beneath them, and he told everyone to be careful and release their flames. Suddenly, large branches of icicles started popping out from the ground. The three of them began dodging them one after another. Carl told Pi Su to get cover behind him since his fire was not suitable for attacking. The wolf fired a barrage of icicles at Dong. He could only focus his energy on dodging them. Just then, Carl and P. Su told him to get out of the way. They had been preparing a combined attack by mixing their flames. They fired it at the wolf and he spewed out a green gas. The gas caught the fire and allowed it to escape unharmed. It was Dong's turn to attack the wolf. The wolf started spraying icicles at him again. He dodged them one after another, but a few still managed to raise his skin. He found an opening and leapt at the wolf, punching it on the face. The wolf lost its balance for a second and turned around to see Dong running at it. He landed another punch on its face. The wolf quickly swung its power to try and hit him, but he was able to dodge. The wolf looked tired. Before Dong could do anything more, it let out a loud howl before grabbing its cub and leaving. Carl told Jaden he couldn't let it escape. Dong refused, telling him to not bully the weak. This was their land that they were trespassing on. Moreover, the Wolf King seemed to have been very desperate while using his techniques. Something did not seem right to him. Pisu noted the wolf's craftiness. It ran away as soon as it realized it could not win. They might have been able to get a wood-type crystal core from it if they had only managed to kill it. Carl told Pai Su it was all his fault since he was bullying the little cub. Dong asked what the crystal core was and if it was related to the crystal crown. Pisu told him that hunting monsters would give them the opportunity to obtain crystal cores. They had the same attribute as the monsters which they belonged to. He had heard about all this from his father since the academy would not teach such high-level stuff to them. However, he didn't know anything about the crystal crown. The crystal core had the ability to supplement the magic power of their respective attributes. The power of the magic techniques remained the same. The fighting ability would become much stronger. Simply put, it acted as a replenishment of a magician's magic power. Despite all of that, crystal courses of monsters below level 3 were useless to them. Only from level 4 were those crystal cores able to replenish magic power, but they were also ridiculously expensive. He changed the topic and asked Dong how he had learned his techniques. They were the ones who had wanted to surprise him, but had ended up receiving a bigger surprise instead. He had managed to use continuous combos really well. If it hadn't been for him, they might have become the wolf's meal for that day. The two of them had been practicing their magic techniques for the past two months and considered their dual-type fireball complete. Dong asked them whether they would believe him if he told them he had learned it all by himself. He didn't mind teaching his techniques to them. They refused his offer, saying that his techniques were only suitable for him since they required the collaboration of two attributes. Tian had taught them to only search for magic techniques that would suit their attributes. However, he, on the other hand, could try the combo they had just used. He had mastered both types really well and might even be able to use it better than them. Dong figured learning a long-range attack would not be so bad. Tian had told them that if they were able to master the dual type of fireball, it could be regarded as a high-level technique, but for now it was just a low-level technique for them. Carl told him that having a long-range technique in his arsenal would be sure to increase his strength. Dong tried out the technique and succeeded in his first try. Pisu felt irritated. They had practiced hard for two months before barely being able to use that skill. Dong smugly told them that having dual attributes came with its own advantages. However, it was still a lot weaker than what they had used. Its magic consumption was quite large, and had consumed one-third of his magic power in one go. It seemed that he still had to work hard to cultivate the two king techniques. The dual fireball could only be used as a supplement to his own strength for now. 
He pointed over to the mountain with the highest peak. As soon as they entered its range, there would be no way for them to return. If everything went according to plan, they should be able to leave the mountains before the next night. It was dangerous to walk at night, so they decided they would camp there for now and rest. Pisu didn't argue, saying he was so worn out he didn't feel like moving at all. They set up a campfire. Dong told them he would go get some more wood in order to keep the low-level beasts away. He used this opportunity to return to Earthcore's lake in order to try and find Yan. His efforts failed as there was still no sign of her. I saw her for days and wondered why she was doing this. He didn't know if he had done something wrong. He decided he would just place the cocktail on the ground and leave. The next day, the group began their toughest hike yet. Dong had used a rope to tie the three of them together. Carl and Pisu were against his idea. Dong explained that it was necessary to increase their safety and prevent them from falling off the cliff. He had not expected the mountain to be so difficult to climb. After a great amount of effort, they had finally reached the peak. Carl felt as if he had been able to break through the twelfth level. Pisu failed the same. He suggested that they should combine the strengths of their crowns and go traveling around the world together. Dong told them to first focus on achieving the triple crown. No one knew what was going to happen in the future anyways. Pisu started arguing, saying he wanted to plan everything right now. Suddenly, they heard a loud cracking sound. All of them became alert. Carl asked Pisu if he had heard anything, and he agreed. Dong first thought it might have been an avalanche, but he figured avalanches don't make such noise. They were at the top of the mountain, but the sound was getting louder. The noise seemed to sound like the cracking of ice. If they rushed down the mountain right now and got caught up in an avalanche, they wouldn't have a chance to run away. The best thing to do for them was to just stay up there and see what would happen. The rumbling got louder and then a sudden boom startled them. Guard was glad they hadn't climbed down the mountain. Just then, the floor we need them started cracking open. The three of them could not react in time and fell through it. Dong told them to not panic and instead unleash all their magic to try and slow down the cracking. He activated his dual-type firewall and aimed it at the surface below. Carl and Pai Su followed him and did the same. However, their magic power was running out and they couldn't hold on any longer. Dong spotted a ground beneath them and told them to jump over there. He made his way sliding through the ice crystals and found that they had both lost their consciousness. He rushed over to check their pulse. Thankfully, they had just passed out from magic power depletion. He wondered where they were. Suddenly, the crystals around him started shattering. He was worried that this place might also collapse. If the ice wall was to collapse here, they wouldn't have any chance of surviving. Suddenly, he heard a deep voice calling out to him. The voice asked him if he was the one who had awakened it from its thousand-year slumber. He had to pay the price for his actions. A chilly wind started blowing at him, freezing his face and body. He couldn't move since Carl and Pai Su were lying behind him and might have ended up freezing to death. He told himself he must not move. He was not going to let anything happen to them. All of a sudden, a huge tornado started moving towards him. The tornado tore through the ice crystals and slowly lifted him into the air. He wondered if he was going to die. Then he remembered he still owed 96 years of unbrewed wine to Yan. He also had to fulfill the promise he had made with his brothers. There was no way he could die there. He activated the extreme dual flames and the tornado dissipated. The being noticed his power. It was the power of the two flame kings from the underground. The being stood up from its resting place, revealing itself to be a dragon. The dragon once again asked him if it was him who had awakened him from his slumber. He wanted to know who this lowly human was. Dong apologized for any mistake he might have made. He told him that he was a human, but not a lowly one, asking the dragon who he was. The dragon was shocked to hear his words. The mountain where he had been resting was named after him. No human had ever dared to be so arrogant in front of him before. He asked Dong if he thought his strength was inferior to that of dragons. He had no idea how Dong had obtained the attributes of the two great kings, but killing him was still as easy to him as killing an ant. Dong asked him what he would do next. The most he could probably do was take his life, but he wouldn't be able to make him give in. The dragon advised him to pay attention to his words. He asked him where he had learned the two kings' attributes. Dong struck back with a question of his own. He asked if the dragon really thought he would surrender his attributes to him, just because he had seen the wall of the two kings through Dong. This angered the dragon and he fired an attack at him. Humans really didn't know the difference between life and death. His blast had shattered the crystals around them. Dong's magic was running out. The dragon asked him if he really thought he could resist his extreme ice attack with his weak borrowed power. Dong told him he wouldn't surrender even if he was reduced to the last ounce of his magical power. He activated his dual flame magic and bet everything on his next blow. His dual-type fireball clashed head-on with the dragon's blast. The shock waves sent him flying back. He thought he was finally going to die. He apologized to Carl and Pai Su, saying he wouldn't be able to fulfill his promise to them. He also apologized to Yan for the 94 years of wine he owed her. 
If there was an afterlife, he would definitely reincarnate and come back to see her again. Suddenly a rose manifested in front of them. Frost wondered what was going on. He had a bad feeling about the familiar fluctuating energy. Jan emerged from the rose and saved Dong. She playfully scolded him for making her worry. Dong thought he was dreaming about her before his death, but if it allowed him to look at Jan again, then he had no regrets. She asked him if he was planning on sleeping there forever. Dong came back to his senses, realizing it was not a dream. He told her to hurry up and leave that place. They were facing a 10th level water attribute divine beast. Jan told him it was fine and that she would handle it. She called out to Frost, saying he had guts to bully him. She ordered him to stay down, and he instantly obeyed her command. Dong had no idea Jan was this powerful. He had never imagined that the strongest dragon in the world would lower in front of him because of her words, especially one with the exact opposite attribute. Jan chanted an incantation. Dong felt silly for worrying about her. He realized how small he had been compared to her. She had come to his aid when he needed her the most, and that was all that matter. There was still a place for him in her heart. He didn't need anything more from her. The dragon became embarrassed, asking her if she could change the punishment. Dong was confused about what he was talking about. Yan told him she was not going to repeat herself. The dragon got scared and immediately rushed to follow her instructions. He dug a hole in the ice using its claws. After a while, he informed them it was ready while sobbing. Yan told Jaden to come over. She directed him to lie down in the basin. He was startled by her sudden request and became embarrassed. She asked him what he was thinking in his little head. Dong told himself he was overthinking. She would never hurt him. He did as she instructed and announced he was going to get in now. He figured there was still a huge gap between them. He was just having too many wishful thoughts. However, he was still very happy to be able to stand by her side. Frost noticed Jan blushing. She asked him what he was looking at and if he wanted to die. She then told him to hurry up and begin the process. He quickly obeyed her, not wanting to get caught in her anger. He bit his front foot and poured the blood on Dong. Dong had no idea what was happening. He suddenly felt a strong pain soaring through his body. He started screaming. She apologetically told him to lie down and not move, saying it would be over soon. The basin had been filled with blood. She gave the dragon another scary look, and he informed her that it was going to be done soon, addressing Yan as her majesty. He poured one last drop of his blood into the basin. Crystal started materializing within it. He informed her he had done his work. One third of his blood was gone, just like that. She told him he was free to leave and pour the drop of her own blood into the basin. The blood burned through the crystals, melting the dragon's frozen essence. The dragon was in her power. The crater had started boiling. Frost knew that Dong was about to suffer. Dong was feeling even more pain than before. The flame was burning his body, but he knew he had to endure it. Jan explained that Frost was an ice dragon with an extremely cold breath in its blood. She had neutralized it with her own blood, and now it was just plain dragon blood. It had the ability to soak one's skin, muscles, meridians, bones, marrow, and internal organs. His body had been too weak, so she baptized it using the dragon's blood. After this, he was going to have a stronger body, even though it wouldn't improve his cultivation. She told him to activate his yin-yang ground so that he could absorb the essence of the dragon blood better. In case he couldn't stand it, he was allowed to pause and breathe before continuing. Dong focused all his energy on enduring the pain. He slowly activated his yin-yang crown. He knew he could not let Yan down. An hour went by and he finally emerged from the pool of blood. He dove back in again in order to continue his cultivation. Frost noted how the blood from Yan was not only strong enough to neutralize his own blood, but it had also become a catalyst, allowing the energy in his blood to be completely utilized. He dreamt of obtaining a drop of her blood too. The bright red color of the blood had slowly begun to fade. The energy in the blood had been completely absorbed. Dong jumped out. The pain in his limbs had turned into a comfortable heat around him. All of his muscles and skin felt extremely resilient. He happily ran over to Yan, telling her how he had succeeded. She told him to get dressed first. He apologized and returned fully dressed. He wondered if the use of dragon blood could still work to save Carl and Pai Su. Started asking her about it, and she quickly told him they would be fine, as if she already knew what he was thinking. The dragon blood was only for him and using dragon blood didn't work anymore. She ordered the dragon to give her something, and he started sobbing. She told him she was not going to repeat herself. He quickly scratched the wall using his claw and opened a portal through the space. This was different from the storage bracelet. He was powerful enough to be able to create his own space, yet he was still scared of Jan. Dong had been underestimating her this whole time. Frost presented them a giant egg, still sobbing. He really did not want to give it to her. She told him he was free to leave. Instead, Frost started talking to Dong, begging him to get the egg back for him. He told him he could make an equal pact with him, offering to become his mount. Human sources were usually only allowed to have mounts after they had reached the sixth crown, 
but he was letting him have it right now. Their pack could last 100 years, and he would always protect Dong faithfully. He told Dong he was the strongest dragon in the world, an adult ice giant. There were very few who could fight him on an equal footing in the human world. With him, he could become the fifth dragon sorcerer and be known as an honorable. That was the title only the strongest sorcerers of each department ever allowed to have. He remembered Tian telling them that the exclusive title of the third flames department was called Shen Guang, while the exclusive title of the fourth flame department's strongest sorcerer was Tai Yi. Therefore, the third flame department's strongest sorcerer would be called Honorable Shen Guang, and the fourth flame strongest sorcerer would be called Honorable Tai Yi. Dong fell silent. He suddenly started shouting at the dragon saying he didn't need a pact with him. Yan was glad. Dong told him that he was a monster of water attribute while he was a fire sorcerer. Secondly, he was a man of strong will and integrity. Frost had called him a lowly human being when he was weak. He had later changed his words and started calling him a great human once Yan appeared. Although he was powerful, he seemed to have no integrity. Dong didn't need a mount like him. He then asked Yan if what he was seeing was a dragon egg. No matter how untrustworthy Frost was, they had no right to take away its children. Yan agreed that children were the most precious thing to any creature. However, this was not really an ice dragon's egg. It was a fire egg that he had snatched from a fire dragon after killing it. He had then fled here and remained hidden for thousands of years to avoid being hunted. Its purpose was to find an opportunity to hatch the egg and take it as its slave. She told him Frost was a male dragon and the unborn dragon inside the egg was a female. Jaden connected the dots and understood how bad the situation had been. He hated Frost even more now. Frost decided it was best if he took his leave and quickly scurried away. Yan asked Dong if he knew why the dragon was so afraid of her. This place was an entrance to the underground world. A thousand years ago, Frost had offended a powerful fire dragon. He had then fled and took shelter in her underground world. She had tasked him with guarding the entrance. Although she couldn't use any of her powers in the human world, he was bound by their pact from the underground and had to obey any orders. Jordan said he had a question for her. She was so powerful in the underground world and could even travel between the underground and human world. Then he wanted to know why she was not able to use her power while she was on the ground. She said she would tell him once he became strong enough to protect her. For now, she had to go back. Frost would help them get back on top of the mountain. She wanted him to become strong enough to protect her so she could come find him in the human world. Heading back and told him to not tell anyone about her. She also mentioned the cocktails he had made for her in the past few days. They had become a little bitter for her taste, and she did not really like them. Therefore, he still owed her 95 years of wine. Dong was thinking about how she had saved him numerous times now. Making cocktails for her was nothing compared to everything she had done for him. All he cared about was that Yan was still drinking his cocktails and still cared about him. He knew he could not let her down. He would work hard to cultivate and protect her with his life whenever she came to the human world in the future. Frost had sent him and his friends back to the top of the mountain. He explained that Dong just needed to go down the road in front of him and he would be able to get out of the wind and frost mountains. Back at the Earth Core's lake, Yan was looking at something in her hand. It was probably what the humans described as tears in their world. She didn't know why she was feeling this way. Seeing him in danger had made her heartache. She wanted to tell him how much he made her heart pound. She decided she would watch him grow stronger and stronger. She would keep the egg warm for him and give it to him once he became strong enough. Carl and Pai Su had regained consciousness. They had no memory of what had happened after they had fallen and were really thankful that he had saved them. Dong told them it was just luck. He had made little holes in the ice wall and formed ice ladders in order to bring them up. They had suffered some shock injuries, but their physique and fire attribute had protected them from being severely injured by the cold. He told them they would recover after some cultivation. They needed to restore their mana and stamina and get out of there as soon as possible. He knew he couldn't tell them about the existence of Frost. Too much time had passed, so he told them that they had to spend the night there and complete their journey the next day. The two of them agreed as they were fully drained. Four days later, they arrived in the Central Empire. They had changed into their everyday outfits in order to blend in with everyone else. Standing in front of them was the Central Plains city of the Central Earth Empire. P. Su exclaimed that the gate was too big. They might still be able to see its walls even if they were to walk two days around it. He suddenly noticed the patterns on the walls. Dong told him they were not patterns. They were the totems of the Yang Earth and Yin Earth. In other words, they were the symbols of the Fifth and Sixth Earth Departments. This was similar to how the vermilion bird and the tang snake were the totems of the yang fire and yin fire. The big silver bird was called sky, and the three-eyed veil was called tian yi. Carl told them to stop looking since they did not have much time. They entered the city and were amazed by its beauty. It was a prosperous metropolis. P. Su was impressed with the wide assortment of edible items they were selling. He told Jaden he wanted to die in this gourmet paradise. 
Dong was focused on the liquor store in front of them. It must have been the bartender Jeweled that Yang was talking about. This was its Central Plains City branch. Pisu told him that it was the largest city on the continent. He had been to the Blazing City, the capital of their southern fire empire. The bartender Jeweled there had been much smaller than the one in front of them. He pointed towards the symbol of a jug, telling him it was the symbol of the bartender Jeweled. The outer five rings represented the attributes of the five elements as well as the five empires. It meant that one needed a bartender, no matter which empire they were in. Carl said that its head office was apparently located in the Northern Water Empire. It was said to have the most excellent bartenders. Pisu had heard that the bartenders were also paid really well, so he could also receive certain benefits from the jeweled if he was able to get the title of master. He asked Dong if he would consider having a side job as a bartender at the jeweled. Dong said he didn't need a bartender qualification. There was no one better than him at bartending in this world anyways. He told them to hurry up and find a place to settle down so that they could report to the academy. He had already decided to pursue the practice of a sorcerer, and his goal right now was to cultivate. Only then would he be able to tell Yan how he actually felt in his heart. Someone interrupted them. He told them that bartending was a noble profession and not everyone would get it. He asked Dong if he really thought he had the ability to enter their jeweled. Pisu was passed, saying that Dong was the best bartender in the world and didn't need any qualification. The man told them to stop spouting nonsense and get lost. Even the Lord of Wine, Duskal himself had never claimed that he was the best. Pisu told him that they were not kids. They were ready to fight him if he was really that strong. Dong told him to forget it since they were still fresh out of the academy and would not be able to defeat him with their current power. He told the man to remember what he had said. He was going to let him know who he was one day. Dong told them it was time to leave. They made their way to the department store. Pisu was still angry about what he had said. He asked Dong why he had held them back even after all of his insults. Dong had an idea of his own. He told the storekeeper he wanted to buy a brush, one piece of cloth, and one bamboo pole. He told P. Su that there was no use fighting with words. They had to speak with facts. He told him to go and buy a rectangular table that was about one and a half meter in height and no less than two meters in width. The man was going to pay for what he had just said. Dong made his way towards the gate of the bartender Jeweled. The guards asked him who he was. He had set up a challenge and told them to inform the members of the Jeweled that he would wait for them for the next two hours. If no one turned up, he would personally remove the logo on their gatehouse. The guards quickly heeded his words and went inside. Two men came out. The first one was Wei Hong, a four-star bartender. Following him was Ye Shang, the two-star bartender who had insulted him. Shang noticed the boys and shouted at them for causing trouble. He asked them if they wanted to die, but Hong silenced him, asking him not to be rude. Hong asked Dong if Jeweled had done anything to offend him that he was making such a scene. Dong informed him that the person behind him had insulted his brothers and had asked him who he was. He had come here to tell him his name. He also wanted everyone else in the bartender Jeweled to know who he was. Hong scolded his student, saying he couldn't ruin the reputation of the Jeweled like that. Shang apologized. Hong then addressed Dong, telling him that he was sorry on behalf of Ye Shang and wanted him to forget about the challenge. Dong greeted him and told him that he couldn't accept his apology. He was not the one who had insulted him and his friends. He wanted to receive a direct explanation from Shang. There was no other way he would take the table away. He told them he was going to stay there for two hours and anyone from the Jeweled was free to challenge him. If he were to be defeated, he would personally lower himself and offer his apology to the Jeweled. He would also respect Shang as a master and leave right away. On the other hand, if no one was able to defeat him, then he wanted Shang to lower himself in front of Dong while the members of the Jeweled were watching and pay homage to him three times while calling him the Lord of Wine. Shang refused right away. Dong told them that if he was not going to do it, then they would have to take down the logo on their archway. Hong tried convincing him to let it go. He believed his teacher would not condone his aggressive actions. Dong told him that he had no bartending teacher. He told him to stop wasting his time. If he was afraid of him, then he could ask someone with a higher level to accept his challenge. He could smell the scent of aged vodka and lemon on Hong. From this, he deduced that Hong must be good at making vodka-based cocktails. His hands were wide and thick, so he was most likely good at flair bartending. It was a pity that he was old, and his mind was too calm now. He could tell that Hong had lost the passion and enthusiasm of vodka. No matter how hard he tried, he could not bring out its essence. Dong used his skills to prepare a three yang moon. It looked as if there were three suns and three moons rising at the same time. Hong knew he couldn't underestimate Dong. Even though he could prepare the three yang moons, he knew he could not do it as confidently as Dong. Dong repeated his question, asking if anyone in the jewel dared to accept his challenge. Shang told the others that they should just call the master. Hong asked Dong if he really had no teacher. Dong said he wasn't going to repeat himself. Hong said it was good for young people to be so high-spirited, but it wouldn't do him any good in the future.
He proposed he would make Shang apologize to him verbally. He would most likely have no problem getting a five-star bartending qualification as it was his profession, so he didn't understand why he was fighting against the jeweled. Dong told him that attending had never been his profession. It was simply an art that he pursued. He also advised Hong that he would never make the best cocktail if he used bartending as a means of making a living. Suddenly, a blue-haired man emerged from the building. He agreed with Dong. Hong went over to him and explained the situation. The man told Dong he was Chen Xiao, the vice president of the Central Plains City branch of the bartender's jeweled. He asked Dong his name. After that, he told him he had heard everything from Hong about what had happened. He wanted to formally apologize on behalf of the bartender jeweled for what Ye Shang had said to him. The onlookers had noticed him and pointed out that he was a seven-star bartending master. Dong wondered why he was called a master. Xiao told him it was just a compliment from others. He then came back to the topic at hand, telling Dong that it was inappropriate for him to block the main entrance of their jeweled. He invited him to come inside to talk. He had seen him use the technique of the three Yang Moon and wished he would become a member of their jeweled. Dong told him he had no interest in joining their jeweled. He was simply inviting them for a challenge. Anyone who didn't want to accept it could leave. But if he was to accept it, then he had probably already heard about its conditions from Hong. Shang was furious, calling him an arrogant boy for declining his master's invitation. Xiao asked him if he really had to go to such extremes. Dong said he didn't care since he was strong. Xiao could do it too if he was as strong as him. Xiao asked him how he wanted the challenge to be done. Dong told him there was not a lot of equipment there, so he would only use a single bartending technique. If he was able to copy it or do something similar, he would win. He activated his storage bracelet and pulled out a few bottles. Xiao noticed he was also able to use yin-yang techniques. He wondered if Dong was someone from the great families. He might have been a noble from the Southern Fire Empire. Dong started using all nine mixing cups at the same time. Xiao realized he could barely do that himself. Even if he was to go all out, he couldn't guarantee success every time. He was afraid that the Central Plains City Branch might actually be embarrassed that day. While using more than one mixing cup, it was necessary to ensure that each cup was controlled accordingly. That was one of the tests of a nine-star bartending qualification. He regretted their president not being present in the city. He was the only one with enough strength to deter Dong. Dong's physical abilities had surpassed his peak from his previous life after being soaked in dragon blood. He was completely confident in his skills this time. He precisely mixed the contents of the cocktail. Xiao asked him if he was making a falling sun. Shang started laughing, relieved that it was just a cup of falling sun, but someone else hushed him. The better the bartender was, the more he would be able to show his skills in bartending with the most common ingredients. The taste was always different when it was prepared by different bartenders. Dong suddenly stopped and put his hands on the table. He used his magic to jude the nine bottles around him. Even Xiao did not know what he was doing anymore. Dong remembered the story of the ten sons during the reign of Yao. He had burned all the crops and killed all the plants. The common people didn't have anything to eat, and monsters plagued their land. Yao had ordered an archer by the name of Yi to kill the monsters plajung their lands and shoot down nine of the sons. Yi did as he was told and cleared away all the disasters. As a result, all the people rejoiced and elected Yao as their leader. That was the story of Hao Ye shooting the nine sons. Dong's bartending skills were a sight to behold. Even Xiao was dazzled by the lights. The bottles precisely flew around above him, not making the slightest contact with each other. He clenched his hand and let out a shout. The bottles merged together to form a fire phoenix. His drink had been done. Everyone watching felt a sense of relief in their hearts, as if a light was shined into the deepest part of their souls. Even Xiao was taken in by it. It broke the shackles in people's hearts and inspired them to not be overwhelmed by the world. Everyone had started cheering for themselves. Xiao understood he was like a hero, Juding everyone, he believed in himself no matter what others said. Dong knew he only had to prove himself. Xiao's jeweled was just there on the street with no decorations, but Dong's technique was a miracle to everyone. He had convinced everyone with his skills. Xiao knew he had lost. Dong asked all of them to have a taste, but Xiao politely declined. Dong decided they would end it there since he had admitted defeat. The cocktails were a gift to them from him. He told Carl and Pai Su he was leaving. Xiao tried to stop him by asking him about the bet. Dong said he had been a little too aggressive, so he was calling it even. If there was anyone who was still not convinced, then they could come find him in the Tiangon Academy. He welcomed anyone's challenge. Shang had admitted his defeat. He told the vice president he would accept any punishment for humiliating the jeweled. Xiao told him they would decide on the punishment once the president returned. For now, he directed them to take the table inside without spilling a single drop of alcohol. Pisu praised Dong for his skills. He was feeling proud of him and asked him to make them a cocktail. Carl said he didn't need to drink it, just watching was pleasing to the eye. Dong told them he would make it later. For now, 
He just wanted to find a place to stay and rest. They had been so excited that they had forgotten to feel tired and were now completely drained out. Pisu pointed out a hotel that would be fit for them. Dong asked if he was sure. Pisu confidently told him that the conditions looked good and it was cheap. He had stayed there before and had faced absolutely no problems. Carl and Dong doubted his words. The hotel definitely did not look cheap to them. Pisu made them follow him inside. The next claimed that it was too high end. A staff member noticed them and came over to inform them that they were only serving executives. Pisu pulled out a black card and demanded two rooms. He wanted them to be the best rooms. The staff member was surprised and apologized for his misbehavior, telling him he would do it right away. Dong and Carl were confused. Dong came over to him and told him how he had never asked this before, but he wanted to know what Pisu's family did. Pisu told him it was just a small business. Dong was still suspicious. The cheapest room in the hotel was for 80 gold coins a night. No family with a small business could afford such an expensive place. He figured they should just leave, and Carl agreed. Pai Su stopped them and began explaining the truth. His family actually owned the Fire Cauldron Association. His grandfather had been its founder. This hotel was also part of his family's business. He did not have to spend a single penny to stay there. Carl was amazed and asked Dong if they could stay there. Dong asked him how rich Pi Su's family was. Carl told him it was as rich as an empire. The Fire Cauldron Association was one of the top ten associations on the continent. Their business ranged all the way from the Southern Fire Empire up to the Northern Water Empire. He felt like beating Pai Su up for hiding such important information from them for so long. Pi Su explained that he didn't mean to lie. The family business had nothing to do with him anyways. He had only received this card for free, and his father would only give him 300 gold coins for his pocket money. His dad had even said that if he couldn't make a name for himself at the academy, he would not be allowed to come back. Everyone in his family needed to work after the age of 18. Only after you had achieved something were you able to inherit a part of the family business. He only had four more years to use the card, after which it would expire. Dong asked him if he was planning to become a businessman in the future. Pisu wasn't sure about it, but at least he didn't regret cultivating and learning sorcerer skills in order to protect himself. Pisu handed Dong the room key, telling him that he could stay in one room while he and Carl stayed in the other. Dong realized the entrance exam was on the next day, so they had to stay in the best condition in order to pass the assessment. Pisu told him that they knew he was going to do fine anyways, Dong quickly went to his room and teleported to the underground. Yan had shown herself to him this time. Dong stood, admiring her beauty, and thinking about whether she had been waiting for him. He asked her if something was wrong. Yan told him he was hiding something from her. She wanted to know about his Hao Yi shooting nine suns technique he had performed today. He told her he had not done it on purpose. He was not actually able to do it before because his physique wasn't good enough. But thanks to her, he had realized he was now strong enough to perform it. He told her he could make it for her right now or any other time she wished. She agreed to his offer, saying that it was only for today. She sipped his freshly prepared drink. It was indeed different from all the others he had made for her. She reminded him that his body was much stronger than ordinary people, but his overall strength was still very weak, and he had to keep working hard to cultivate. He now had four benchmark skills. To obtain the next benchmark skill, he had to use each of these four skills a thousand times. His power also needed to reach the level of two crowns. She told him it might not be a bad idea to learn some common skills from the academy in the meantime. He understood her. It was time for him to go back to the human world. She made him remember that he had to mix even better cocktails in the future than the ones she had drunk today. The day of the entrance exam had arrived, and the three of them headed towards Tiangan Academy. P. Su instructed the hotel employee to leave. If they were able to pass the assessment, they would be directly admitted to the academy. Carl wondered if the exam was going to be difficult. After all, it was the top college in the whole continent, and they were probably not going to make it easy to pass. They made their way towards the academy. Pisu was impressed with the lavish scenery around the academy. All those finely carved rocks must have cost them a lot. Carl reminded him that it was a college jointly funded by the five empires. Pisu pointed towards the main entrance. They made their way towards it and saw a writing engraved on both sides of the steps. It read that the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth yang were to be studied in the daytime. The second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth yin were to be cultivated at night. The registration office was above the stone step. They walked up to it and were amazed by its scenic beauty. Their senior Ju Tian greeted them at the doorstep. Dean Yang had sent a letter of recommendation for the three of them not too long ago. As a result, he was there to welcome them. He told Jaden he had surprised him. He had not actually expected him to be able to condense his yin-yang crown. Dong told him he had only been lucky and would still need his Ju dance in the future. Jutian told them it was time to take them inside. 
Before they could start moving, a familiar face arrived. It was Ye Shang from the bartender Jeweled. He greeted Dong, exclaiming what a coincidence it was that they were meeting again. Zhu Tian asked him if he knew his juniors. Shang told him that he had met them yesterday. He wished all of them the best of luck on their entrance exam. He wanted them all to get accepted into the academy so that they could become classmates in the future. The three of them became startled. They had no idea that he was a student of the academy. Zhu Tian told him he was going to first send them in for the assessment. Shang was looking forward to the good news. After they had departed, Zhu Tian asked Dong how he had come to know Ji Ye Shang. Dong asked him if Shang had the last name as him. Zhu Tian told him he did, and he was apparently a famous but dangerous person in the academy. The students of Tiangan Academy were divided into three levels. The lowest were the bachelor-level students who had just entered the academy and had not condensed two crowns yet. The middle level consisted of students with more than two crowns, but less than three. They were also officially recognized as students of the academy. In order to graduate from the academy, a student had to cultivate to level 30 and condense his third yin-yang crown. The academy had a one crown higher requirement than a normal academy. The third level was a special group known as the yin-yang school. Only students who had condensed two crowns before the age of 16 were allowed to join it. Everyone there was an elite and incredibly genius, but he had no idea when they would graduate. Shang was one of the top 10 masters of the Yin Yang school. He informed them that he was actually not supposed to attend to the registration of new students that day. He asked Dong if he had offended him. Dong told him a half-truth, saying it had been nothing but a little misunderstanding that they had sorted out. Zhu Tian was glad to hear that, but Carl and Pi Su were scared. They had messed with the wrong person, yet Dong didn't seem to care at all. Then told them to go inside from the front to the middle of the main field behind the front hall. The people there were responsible for the assessment. There was only one assessment, which was actual combat. Two freshmen would come together to challenge one official student from the academy. The freshmen were allowed to choose their partners, but there could only be two of them in one group. If they were able to hold their ground for half an hour against the official students, they would officially pass the assessment. Dong told Carl and P. Su that they would be great in a group. They just so happened to complement each other's yin-yang, and it should not be too difficult for them to pass the assessment with their fireball attack. They asked him what he would do. He asked them if they believed in his strength. The fights were being held on large stages erected from the ground. P. Su told Dong it was almost their turn and they would need to leave him soon. Dong advised them to be calm and not rush to attack. They had to try and save their magic power while relying on their combination skills. They would be easily able to hold on for half an hour if they followed his advice. They left and he figured it was time for him to find a partner. Everyone seemed to be already standing with a partner. He searched hard for anyone left who could team up with him. Notice the little girl sitting in the corner of the hall. She looked younger than everyone else. He had heard that the qualification for the Tiangan Academy was to simply condense the yin-yang crown. As such, ordinary people could start practicing as early as the age of ten. He wondered if the little girl had already achieved her yin-yang crown. If that was the case, then she was definitely a true genius. Dong went over to talk to her and asked her if something was wrong. He had figured she was also there as a freshman to take the assessment. She told him she was, but nobody wanted to team up with her for the exam. Everyone thought that she was too young and not capable of fighting. She told him she had already condensed a yin-yang groan. Dong asked her if she wanted to team up with him. Her face lightened up and she agreed to his request, calling him a good person. He introduced himself as Dong and asked her name. She told him she was Leng Yue. The two of them went over to register their team. He showed the examiner his letter of recommendation and wrote down his name. The examiner was surprised to see a fire and a water attribute user in the same team. He told Jaden he still had the opportunity to reconsider his partner. Leng Yue apologized to him for her attribute. Dong told the man he was fine being teamed up with her. Leng Yue cheered up again saying she wouldn't hold him back. Dong told her he already trusted her. He told her she could wait for the opportunity to attack in the back while he would block the examiner's attack from the front. The examiner told him that he would be assigning an official student from the 9th Water Department for their assessment. He reminded them that they had only one chance for the assessment, and they had to do their best. The two of them walked up on stage to get ready. The examiner announced that they were going to fight against Luo Qingfeng, the master of the 9th Water Department. Qingfeng asked them if they were ready to start. If he could hold on to himself for half an hour under Ching Feng's attack, he would win, otherwise he would be eliminated. Dong exchanged greetings with Ching Feng, and he began his attack. It turned out he was actually a level 25 ninth water master. He quickly instructed Lung Yue to stay behind him. Dong activated his magic, and the half-white, half-black crown appeared in front of him. He was afraid he might have to only rely on his own strength in order to pass this assessment. Behind him, Leng Yue was activating her own yin-yang crown to help him. He activated his Devouring Sun ability, 
and the academy student replied with an ability of his own. The two of them exchanged blows. Their attacks canceled each other out. Dong was not done yet, and launched another attack at him. Ching Feng was impressed with the students who had been recommended to the academy this year. He told Jaden that he was still not strong enough to hold on for half an hour. He activated a ninth water heavenly barrier to block Jaden's attack. Dong wondered if this was the absolute suppression of strong magic and conflicting attributes. Either way, he was not going to give up. The barrier blocked his attack and struck back at him. Ching Feng noticed that his attributes had changed. He grew interested in how many more surprises Dong was going to bring to the assessment. He activated another ability, the ninth water thousand strikes. Leng Yue called out to him to be careful. The water swapped him from his feet and pushed him several feet back. Leng Yue knew she couldn't just sit still and watch. She had worked so hard to reach that point and nobody wanted to team up with her. It was only Dong who was nice to her and believed in her. She knew she couldn't let him fight alone. She had to do something to help him. She activated her ability, the tenth water essence. Ching Feng had been toying with Dong. He noticed her attacks pass by him and they switched their direction to hit him from behind. Dong knew that this was the perfect time to attack, while Ching Feng was focused on defending her attacks. He activated his extreme flame and slashed at the barrier. Lung Yue's attack also struck the barrier from the other side and blasted it open with a loud explosion. Ching Feng could not believe what had just happened. Dong rushed towards him. He had been able to break Ching Feng's ninth water heavenly barrier and tenth water thousand strikes. One of Leng Yue's attacks had also made its way towards him. It struck him in the back and exploded in his body. He had been careless. The intense chill worked in an instant, piercing through his skin, bones, muscles, and internal organs. At the same time, Dong swung at him with his magic, knocking him back. He realized he had actually lost to two freshmen. Before he knew it, he had fainted. The examiner rushed to Ching Feng's aid. Dong realized he may have gone too far. He was vomiting blood everywhere. He was impressed with his power, being able to knock him down in just two moves. The examiner told his colleague to go and ask for help from the teachers. He ordered both Jaden and Lung Yue to stay where they were. They would wait for the academy teachers to deal with them. Dong told Lung Yue there was nothing they needed to be afraid of. A few moments later, the Ninth Water Grandmaster Shui Rohan and First Wood Grandmaster Long Tian arrived at the scene. The examiner asked them to take a look at Ching Feng. The condition was not great. Rohan asked why he was so hurt so badly. Tian told him to help Ching Feng out, since he was also of the ninth water attribute. Rohan took a look at him and realized it was really bad. He had no choice but to use a Natal totem. The totem took the shape of a woman and completely healed all of Ching Feng's injuries. Tian asked Rohan why he had used the Natal totem. Rohan explained that it was looking really bad and he might have died. He told him that his natal totem could only heal some external injuries temporarily. He would need his help to save the kid. Tien was surprised with the severity of his wounds. He held out, calling for the perpetrator to come forward. Dong answered him, saying it was him who had done this. Tien started to say something to him, but Rohan told him it was not the time to argue, and they had to save Ching Feng. Tien understood him and called out his spirit of life and nature. He asked it to answer his call and gather before him. The lead started growing and turned into a leaf of first wood. Rohan followed suit and called out to the water element in the atmosphere. He had gathered the energy of the heavenly ninth water. The leaf absorbed the heavenly water and wrapped itself around Ching Feng like a cocoon. Rohan and Tian started to begin the process. Rohan called out to the Queen of Ninth Water, while Tian called out to the Green Dragon of First Wood. Their images popped up above their respective grandmasters. They then combined and began to have a rebirth. Dong knew he was witnessing powerful magic. Leaves had begun to fall from the sky. Everyone on the field could clearly feel their body being nourished by this wonderful magic power, even he who had depleted his power during the exam felt it had returned. He knew this was a magic skill capable of instantly turning the tide of a battle. This was the true strength of a five-crown grandmaster. With such a combination of magic skills, even the worst injury could be saved in an instant. Lung Yue pointed out that the healing had been completed. Ching Feng re-emerged from the cocoon, still not having regained his consciousness. Rohan told Tian he was fine and that they had reached him just in time. However, it was going to take at least a month for him to recover. He had to be sent to the infirmary in order to rest and would not be allowed to eat anything for the next 24 hours. Lung Yue asked Dong if they were in trouble. Dong comforted her, saying he was here with her. He had not expected to get into trouble so soon after arriving at the academy. It would be more than good enough if they were to not punish him, let alone let him pass the assessment. The grandmasters returned to deal with Dong. Rohan asked them if they were the ones who had heard Ching Feng, Dong told him it had nothing to do with Lung Yue. Everyone around him could tell him that he alone had hurt him. Rohan told him he didn't need to be so nervous. He was not the first one to injure an official student in charge of the assessment, and he would certainly not be the last. 
He understood that Dong had trouble controlling his magic skills. The Academy was not going to punish them. He introduced himself and informed them that they had been officially accepted by the Academy. Dong was surprised and even Lang Yue could not believe it. Rohan explained that Ching Feng's injury was still strange. He was hoping that they could cooperate with him to find out what had happened. Dong told Lung Yue to wait for him here, and he would be back soon. Lung Yue told him that she was going to go with him. Even though she was a kid, she still knew loyalty. Tian said that she too needed to come with them. Carl and P. Su had returned. They had seen what had happened just now and asked him if he would be okay. He told them he would be fine, and that they should focus on their assessment. The Grandmasters took them to the school building behind the field. It was known as the five-department teaching area of the academy. Each of the elements had its own department building. They entered the Five Elements Hall and Rohan instructed them to wait for him. He chanted an incantation and activated the water teleporting formation. A small stone platform emerged from its center. He approached it and placed his tag on it. The formation activated and was ready to be used. He called everyone over to stand with him. Dong praised the mechanism. This was the first time he had seen such an ingenious thing. Leng Yue told him she was a little scared. Tian assured her they were not going to do anything to them. The formation had gone several hundred feet underground and finally came to a halt. Dong was impressed with how big the underground of the academy was. Tuan told him this was just a small part of the Tiangan Academy. Rohan placed his tag on the stone next to the entrance, and the door automatically opened. Dong noticed that the walls of the tunnel had been inscribed with the patterns and formations of the five elements body. This would be very helpful for his cultivation. Rohan told him he was quite knowledgeable. They finally arrived at his room and he placed his tag next to the door once again. The door quickly opened and they went inside. Lung Yue could not express how beautiful the place was. Rohan told them to make themselves at home. Dong noticed that the room was filled with the energy of the water element, which might conflict with his fire attribute. He was not feeling at ease. On the other hand, the place was completely suitable for Lung Yue. Tian began his interrogation, asking them what had happened at the assessment. It took Dong 15 minutes to explain the situation. He had left Tian shocked. He had no idea how having a dual flames attribute was even possible. Dong showed him both flames at once, and he knew he couldn't argue anymore. Rohan was glad there was another genius joining the fire department, but he also wanted one in his water department. Tian began asking all the important questions without delay. He wanted to know how he had managed to break through Ching Feng's large-scale magic suppression. His magic power was at least ten levels higher than him. Logically speaking, it would have been almost impossible for Dong to rush out of his suppression. Secondly, even if he had gotten past his suppression, why did he not resist when Dong was attacking him? Instead, he let himself get hit by Jaden's combo, which resulted in a killing effect. Thirdly, it didn't seem like Dong's combo could have caused him such severe damage. When they had examined his body, they had found that his internal organs had been severely damaged. On the contrary, the damage to the skin, muscles, and bones was not that serious. He should not have been able to kill Ching Feng with just two hits of his magic power. Dong praised him, saying he had indeed proved himself to be a teacher of the Tiangan Academy and a five-crown master by asking all the important questions. He began his explanation. Firstly, when he had been under Ching Feng's range of magic power suppression, he had converted all his magic power into the third flame attribute also known as the Yang Fire. At the same time, he was containing his magic so it wouldn't explode. He would release all the power of his third flame right when his magic skills would hit Ching Feng's ninth water magic, while it was true that Ninth Water could restrain the Third Flame, the Third Flame still had the strongest explosive power. He had used that explosive power to break through Ching Feng's defenses. Rohan cried out in disbelief. Ninth Water was extremely in conflict with the Third Flame. Once the magic power of the Ninth Water touched his body, his Third Flame would immediately erode. It was impossible to release its original power. Add this to the fact that there was a huge difference in their magic power levels, even if we were to use the method of breaking with a dot. It was still impossible for a low level like him to break through the suppression of a level 25 2 crown sorcerer. Dong realized they were too smart to be fooled. He told them it might have been because he had a certain resistance to ninth water. He had once soaked his body with the blood of a ninth water type creature. At that time, his magic power was not strong enough, so it had no effect on his body. So he surely must have had a certain resistance to the magic power of the ninth water. Rohan came over to him and held up his wrist. He realized Dong was not lying. Not only was his skin resistant to the ninth water magic, but it was also very tough, far exceeding that of ordinary people. He asked Jaden to answer the remaining questions. Dong said he had told them everything he knew. Tian doubted him, saying that he didn't even know his own skills. Lang Yue interrupted them, saying she knew what had happened. He had not been able to move because he was hit by her critical strike skill. 
One needed to resist the inextricable invasion of the soul after being attacked, rendering them unable to move. Her tenth water essence had passed in a parabola. Dong's vision had been blocked by Ching Feng's magic, so he couldn't see it. Rohan asked her if she really knew how to do a tenth water essence. He began asking her where she was from. She told him her grandpa wouldn't allow her to say it. She had to be careful when she was outside. She couldn't tell anyone she was from the Lang family, and she couldn't tell them that she had achieved a yin-yang crown when she was only ten. Otherwise, she might get kidnapped by strange uncles. The three of them realized they might have been the strange uncles. Rohan pretended he didn't hear that and came back to the topic at hand. It now made sense why Ching Feng was restricted if he had been caught off guard. But even so, the damage shouldn't have been this serious. Suddenly, they realized something. Dong and Leng Yue may have accidentally unleashed a three-attribute combo. It was a combination of three elements that conflicted with each other. Everyone noticed that this was a brand new topic. Dong didn't understand what they were talking about. Tian told him they didn't understand as well. He guessed that when Dong's dual flame combo skills broke out, the magic power of Ten Water in Ching Feng's body had not been completely eliminated, so the three-powered Third Flame, Fourth Flame, and Tenth Water might have collided in his body in a special way. They then mutated, which was normally called a combo skill change, which released a terrifying amount of energy burst at once. It completely ended up destroying his ninth water magic defense and knocked him out. This was probably what had happened. Rohan said it wasn't possible to completely merge unrefined magic with conflicting attributes outside a body. The two of them had to have created a precedent. This was an important discovery that they had to report immediately. Tian instructed Rohan to go and report it to the Academy Board of Directors. School was about to start soon, so all the directors were probably there. Probably better if he explained it to them because he was from the Ninth Water Department, the same one as Ching Feng. He would stay there with these two talented juniors, he knew the whole academy was going to be taken by surprise. Rohan followed his instructions while the three of them waited in his room. Dong was still processing what had happened. They had activated a three-attribute combo, and the attributes had been in conflict. She wasn't lying when she had said she wouldn't hold him back. He could tell from Rohan's reaction that the Lang family from the Northern Water Empire was by no means an ordinary family. Dong asked Tian if he was also a graduate of the Tiangon Academy. He told Jaden he had never mentioned him being a teacher. He was a student just like both of them, but he was just more experienced. Dong wondered how a five-crown student could exist. Tian told him there was nothing wrong with him calling Tian a teacher, since they also performed some of the teacher's duties from time to time. They were kind of special in the academy. Dong asked him if they both belonged to the Yin Yang school. Tian was surprised he knew about it. Dong said he had heard it from a senior while registering. He was an official student of the Tiangen Academy. Tian said he had only scratched the surface, but Dong was right. They belonged to the Yin Yang school. Tian ranked 5th, and Rohan ranked 6th in the school. There was no age limit for the yin-yang school. A student could stay as long as he wanted, and if the academy felt that he still had the potential to cultivate, then he wouldn't have to rush to graduate. Besides, the control in their yin-yang school was the most relaxed in the whole academy. He told them he had been impressed by their assessment. They might actually get admitted into the school. If that was the case, then they would become the students with the lowest level to ever enter the school. Leng Yue asked him what the benefits of joining the yin-yang school were. Tian told her there were countless benefits, but it was also really competitive in the yin-yang school. Although they enjoyed the highest standard of treatment in the academy, they also had to face dangers that ordinary students had never faced. They would only know the rest of the details if they truly became a member of the school. Dong remembered Shang and asked Tian what his rank was in the yin-yang school. Tian was shocked and asked if he was familiar with him. He wondered if Dong was also from the Ji family, the Ji family were all earth elements while he was a dual flame wielder. Dong told him he had just met him a few times. Apparently, Ji Ye Shang was the most outstanding genius of the past ten years. He was already among the top ten in the school at the end of last year. He was currently ranked as the tenth. Dong inquired how many students there were in the Yin Yang school. Tian told him there were only 48. If both of them were to be admitted by exception, they would reach 50 students. They hadn't had any new students arrive for several years. Meanwhile, at the core of the yin-yang school, Rohan shouted that he had something to report to the board. A woman emerged from the gate and informed him that the directors were having a meeting, asking him to not disturb them if there was nothing urgent. Rohan addressed her as the third sister and told her he wouldn't have bothered them if there was nothing urgent. She looked worried and told him to follow her inside. She apologized to the board for interrupting them and informed them that Rohan had something important to report. Rohan began explaining that a dual flame student had emerged in the round of this year's freshman assessment. He had teamed up with a ten-year-old girl named Leng Yua from the Leng family of the Northern Water Empire, and it seemed that they had created a three-attribute combo of conflicting attributes. As a result, 
a two-crown official student who was in charge of their assessment, had been seriously injured to the extent that he only survived. Tian and him had managed to save him, thanks to their natal combo. A man with red hair expressed his interest in the dual flames. He had heard about the boy before and wanted to take a look at him. A white-haired man congratulated him. Addressing him as Brother Ju, he asked him how he had heard of the lad. Brother Ju told him that he was from the Lihuo Academy. According to Bingxian, he didn't even understand how the land had succeeded in cultivation. He was a dual flame with a balanced yin-yang. This was the first time such an incident had happened, so he suggested they let him join the yin-yang school so that they can focus on training him. Another man stepped forward and objected to Brother Ju's request. He told them it wasn't right. After all, Dong was only level 14, and he was still 14 years old. If he was not able to achieve two crowns by the age of 16, he would not be eligible to join the yin-yang school. None of the teachers knew how the cultivation worked for a balanced yin-yang sorcerer. He was lucky to be able to condense even a single yin-yang crown, and nobody knew if he could achieve the second crown as well. If his cultivation suddenly stagnated in the future, it would be a waste of time for them. He would not allow the rules to be broken so casually. He told them they could discuss this again once he had achieved his two crown status. On the other hand, they could make an exception for the little girl, since she had managed to condense the crown by the young age of ten. She could easily achieve the two crowns in no time. He called out to a man named Leng and asked him if the girl was a jewel of his family. The man told him that little Leng Yue was a genius that the Leng family had rarely seen in a 100 years. He had received the recommendation qualification to apply for the academy by herself. He had great confidence in his great-granddaughter. Brother Ju told them they were just singing the same tune. If their water department could make an exception for admission, then the fire department should be allowed to do the same. They could not forget that the current chief of the Yin Yang school was from his fire department. The black-haired man told Brother Ju that Fury was no longer from the fire department. Was he really so sure about the dual flames lad and that he could call him the next Fury? Brother Ju informed him he was free to fight him if he wasn't convinced. The white-haired man had calmed everyone down. He announced his decision. Both of them were not joining the Yin Yang school yet because of their current conditions. Their talents had not been fully revealed yet, they shouldn't just go and start breaking the admission rules of the yin-yang school right away. He still found a three-attribute combo very interesting, especially a three-attribute combo with all three attributes in conflict. They had studied Tiangan magic for so many years before, but had never been able to achieve it. He decided he would set it up as a new subject. He figured he could make an exception for both of them to join the yin-yang school. And if they were unable to reach two crowns by the age of 16, then they would have to leave the school. Everyone agreed with his decision. Rohan started heading back to help those two with their registrations. The five-yearly pass was about to open in two years. He decided they could continue discussing the candidates to participate in the hunt. A new batch of graduates had just been sent to the battlefield. But the current situation didn't seem so good. They needed to discuss whether they should lower its entry threshold to admit more new students in order to strengthen the defense force. Sister Third arrived with Rohan back to his room. She asked Tian if he had really made a big discovery. Before he could answer, she lowered down to meet the two new students. Rohan confirmed it. The little girl was in the 10th water department just like her. She called out to Leng Yue to have a good look at her. Leng Yue told her she looked beautiful. She addressed both of them, announcing that on behalf of the Tiangan Academy, she was informing them that they had been accepted by the Academy, and at the same time they had also been approved to join the Yin Yang School. Dong told himself he was now a member of the Yin Yang School. The third sister said she would take them through the admission procedures now, she would also briefly introduce the situation of the academy to them. Tiangan Academy was an academy with yin-yang sorcerers from all ten departments from around the world. It was divided into five main teaching buildings, and each teaching building was used by one of the five elements. Students with less than two crowns were generally on the lower two floors of the teaching building, and official students with more than two crowns were on the upper two floors of the teaching building. As long as you achieve two crowns, you could be upgraded immediately without any additional assessment. Students with two crowns or less could choose up to five basic skills. If they had two or more crowns, there would be no limit to the number of basic skills they could have. They could also pick three hit skills. This was an unimaginable preferential treatment for ordinary sorcerer academies. One any one of these hit skills would be worth tens of thousands of gold coins on the market. The junior students also had an identity card system. It was according to their own department and was carved with their own initial characters. The official students with two crowns used tokens. One side of the token was the totem of their department, while the other side was the student's academic serial number. The elite academy students of the Yin Yang School had the most special roles. These students cultivated and studied in the underground secret base. It was impossible to enter it without a token. 
The character on the token represented special and privileged students, and they were ranked according to their strength. Any student in the Yin Yang school could challenge a student with a higher rank than themselves at any time, but it had to have been approved by the academy teacher and must be conducted in a formal setting. If one succeeded in the challenge, they would replace their opponent's ranking. Only the top 10 students at the Yin Yang school would have the opportunity to learn the charge skill. She told them she would have them make their own identity tokens so that they could be the same as the other students in the school. They entered through a door and Dong felt a strong wave of heat rush out around him. It was really hot inside the chamber. Third sister activated a barrier to protect Lung Yue from the heat. She thanked her, saying it was much better now. Dong, on the other hand, had not even reacted to the heat. She addressed a man as old master, telling him that she had come to ask him for help. The man asked her what had happened. She informed him that the two juniors with her were starting their studies at the Yin Yang school and requested him to make an identity token for each of them. The man noticed that they were young. Leng Yue and Dong greeted him by introducing themselves. The man figured that the little girl was the descendant of Master Leng, so it was no wonder that she had been able to enter the academy. On the other hand, he didn't notice anything from Dong. He asked him to come closer to him. Dong felt as if a powerful force was pulling his body. He was slowly sliding towards the man. The man asked him which family he belonged to, since he could not see any movements of his aura. The man placed his hand on Dong's chest, and his yin-yang crown appeared. He detected some sort of advanced technique inside Dong. Dong warned him that if he tried to do this again, he won't be sorry for whatever happened to him. The man used his powers to bind Dong, restricting his ability to move. The man told him his technique was good, but not good enough to affect him. He pierced through Jaden's chest once again. Apparently, there was some sort of magic barrier placed there. With his strength, he could easily destroy the barrier, but if he did that, the boy might end up getting killed. It was simply not possible to check what he was hiding inside his body. The man told him he was an interesting one, and did the restraining magic and asked Dong where he had learned to put up a magic barrier, told him he didn't even know what a magic barrier was. He realized that without strength, he would easily fall at the mercy of others. Winemaking was the only thing he was actually good at. After entering the academy, he had been crushed in an instant. The man asked him how he was able to cultivate them, and who had trained him in the art of cultivation. Dong told him he was not obliged to answer. The third sister told him not to be rude. Dong said it was disrespectful to ask about other people's secret techniques. He might be weak now, but that didn't mean that he would bend to others' wills. The man apologized for his rash behavior. Dong's magic just seemed very strange to him. It was in line with his own power, but at the same time very different. He hoped Dong would give him an explanation in exchange for some items. The third sister was surprised to hear that the man was actually offering to exchange items with someone. Dong refused his offer, saying there was nothing strange with his power— he was simply a dual flame user. The man was taken aback. A balanced yin-yang dual flame usage would allow him to perform magic conversions. It finally made sense why he had been admitted with very high remarks. He asked the third sister for their token numbers. She told him that Dong was hash 49, the yin-yang dual flame user, and a leng yue was hash 50, a tenth water user. He grabbed a few materials and got off to work. Didn't didn't know why the sister was so respectful to the man, in terms of strength, she could easily surpass him under a cultivation base that stood naturally above the 58th level. He wondered if she might actually be a six-crown level powerhouse. He could only imagine how strong the man must be. Such a huge gap in strength, he was still unable to detect Dong's magic power. He had no idea why this was happening. There must have been some reasonable explanation. Whether it was a characteristic of his own yin-yang vortex, or he might have had a technique for locking his yin-yang. He figured it must have been the flames since they passed on the protective skills. The man announced that the tokens were ready. Leng Yue grabbed her token, exclaiming how beautiful it was. Dong was surprised with this token. The man clearly knew that he was a dual flame user, yet he had given him a third flame token. The man instructed the third sister to accompany the little girl out first and help her with the admission procedures. He had something to talk about with the boy. She obeyed him at once and told him she would come back in an hour to pick up Dong. Leng Yue was hesitant to leave without him, but he told her that they were already inside the academy, so they would get more opportunities to meet. The girls left and the man asked Dong if he knew who he was. Dong guessed that he was a magic weapon forger. The man told him he was correct. He was actually a famous magic weapon forger. Dong asked him what his occupation had to do with him. He had never heard of a magic weapon forged before. The man was shocked. He told Jaden he was too ill-informed and narrow-minded. He tried to explain it to Dong by saying that an excellent magic weapon made in accordance with the user's characteristics was enough to increase his own strength by 10%. The most powerful magic weapon he had ever made was able to increase the magician's attack power by 20%. He asked him if he understood now. Dong said he did, but he had no idea what that had to do with him. 
The man said his heart was hurting. He asked Dong if he had an elm lump in his head, because he was making him furious. The man asked if he didn't want a magic weapon specifically forged for him. Dong said he didn't. After all, nothing in this world came for free. There was definitely something that the man wanted in return from him. Additionally, his cultivation was just as at a beginner level, and relying too much on magic objects would affect his own strength improvement, so he had no reason to be interested in getting one. The man looked annoyed. He told Jaden that he had noticed how his dual flames had been altered. Dong asked him what he was going to do about it. There were no rules in the academy that forbid the attendance of students with altered magic. The man jumped up in joy. He had been right all along. He simply made a guess, but Dong had confirmed it for him. The man pleaded with him to let him see his altered flame, since he hadn't seen one in ages. He simply couldn't wait any longer. Dong told him he would show him his altered flame only if he told him his secret, or else he could forget. The man told him he was sly and agreed to tell him. He asked Dong what he thought about the academy. Despite a few users with yin-yang balanced attributes existing in the past, none of their cultivation attempts had succeeded. There hadn't been anyone in Tiangan Academy that had successfully achieved a dual yin-yang cultivation. The man asked him how he was able to succeed. The only answer he could think of was that his flame had been altered. He guessed it might have been using a thunder element. Thunder could be divided into both yin and yang. Using yin-yang dual flames to hide his own thunder element was really clever. Dong told him he was unfortunately wrong. He hadn't really expected the academy to have tested dual attributes this many times. The man was surprised it wasn't a thunder element. He begged for him to show him his altered element. He told him he would keep it a secret for him. He was probably the only one who could see that he had an altered fire element. The person who was in charge of training yin-yang dual element students had been his professor. He had devoted his whole life to training dual element users in their cultivation, and he had always been reluctant to admit that elements with both yin and yang did not exist. It was only before his death did he tell him that unless an element had been altered, it would be difficult for the yin and yang to coexist. This secret was only known by him. Dong asked the man why he should trust him. The man told him that he, Zhu Yan, swore in the name of the Lord of Fire that he would never spread the word regarding Dong's altered flame. Otherwise, the Lord of Fire would abandon him and deprive him of all his magic powers. He had bound an elemental contract with the Lord of Fire. Brother Zhu told him that the elemental contract as he knew it was complete. Any sorcerer would not make such a contract so easily, especially this kind of contract that involved the elemental lords. He wanted Dong to trust him now. Dong finally gave in to his plea. He opened his yin-yang lock and the two flame kings appeared. Brother Zhu recognized them as the sacred fire of the Yuanyang's 43rd year on a 60-year cycle and the spiritual fire of the Dark Moon's 54th year on a 60-year cycle. The fact that the two ultimate fires were appearing together in one person at the same time was mind-boggling to him. Dong asked him if he knew these two flames. Brother Zhu told him the story of the strongest fire sorcerer who had reached the ninth level crown and had the skill to compress his own magic power a hundred times and had accomplished the dual flames usage using the powers of the legendary extreme fires of yin and yang. Brother Zhu asked him if this was true, if they were really the ultimate dual flames. Dong confirmed it. He then asked him what it had to do with the thunder attribute Brother Zhu had just mentioned. Brother Zhu told him that thunder was a variation of fire. The attack power was more terrifying than that of the third flame and was divided into yen and yang. But very few people possessed such properties. The biggest mechanic of the thunder element was that it would not be restrained by the water element, but it would be restrained by the earth element. However, the thunder element could not be compared to the ultimate dual flames in any way. Brother Ju told Jaden that he was not simply a genius, but one that only came once every thousands of years. If he hadn't concealed his extreme fires, how would they have reached him? He tried to convince Dong to do another trade. Dong wondered what he was planning this time. Brother Ju told him that he had had a really good feeling about him ever since they had met. He proposed that they become sworn brothers. Dong declined at once, seeing the man was too old compared to him. Brother Ju told him he was only 97 years old. Dong exclaimed that he was barely 14 and the man was old enough to be his great-grandfather. Brother Ju asked him which members of the college board were not over 100 years old already. Compared to them, he was still young. He started listing down the benefits of Dong becoming his sworn brother. If anyone dared to provoke him in the future, he could always come to him for help, and he would take care of them. Apart from the members of the board, no one else was capable of standing up to him. Moreover, if he needed any magical weapons in the future, he could always look up to his older brother to build him anything he wanted for free. Dong asked him what he wanted in return. Brother Ju told him that the quality of the flame was the most important thing to him— if he could help him improve it with his dual flames, his casting level would definitely improve by a huge margin. He might even be able to forge an exclusive item like the Ten Great Artifacts one day. Dong had started to have second thoughts. 
He told Brother Ju he couldn't promise anything. He still needed to practice his abilities. Moreover, with his current strength, he couldn't last long with the dual flames activated, so he wouldn't be able to help Brother Ju. Brother Ju remembered that he was only at the 10th level, and his magic was still not powerful enough. Brother Ju proposed that he could help him once he reached the triple crown level in the future. It wouldn't take much, and he would only need Dong to help him for three hours a week. He told Jaden he had something he wanted to give him. He showed him two top-grade 7th level crystal crowns. Their magic power was balanced, and this made them the most suitable item for him. With these crystal crowns, his magic power would increase by 15%. He feel his skills skyrocketing with practice. He also reminded Dong that he could rely on him whenever someone tried to mess with him in the future, apart from the geezers in the college board. Dong finally succumbed and promised him that he would come back to help him for three hours a week once he had achieved his triple crown. He had actually needed a strong supporter inside the academy, where there were so many experts in order to help him improve his strength. Brother Ju hugged him, saying it had been decided. They were brothers from now on. He told Jaden that his elder brother loved him to death. Ye Shin had come to pick Dong up. Brother Ju told him that he may now live with her. He would naturally find him whenever he wanted later. He also asked her to help him in taking care of Dong. She assured him she would do her best. The two of them took their leave, and she asked him how he had become so friendly with the old master in such a short time. Dong told her it might have been because they were both fire-type users. She showed him his room, where he was also going to practice in the future. She also showed him a map of the Yin Yang Academy. He was going to be able to have special tutors to Jude him. She told him to remember to cultivate at least two crowns before the age of 16 if he wanted to continue studying at the academy. Dong thanked her for her Judance. She told him she would now let him rest, and left. Dong was finally alone. He knew he had to take care of one last thing before he settled down. He made his way back to Earthcore's lake. Yan told him that the triple combo he had prepared looked pretty good today. Dong said that it was just a coincidence. He hadn't actually expected it to end up like that. He told her that his dual flames had been discovered. She told him he didn't need to worry about it. His abilities would have been known sooner or later. She told him to try and make use of his ability to make weapons. He should also use his ultimate dual flames to help him while he was at the academy. In return, he should try to get as many powerful items from him as he could. She told him she had suppressed the energy of the core, and he could now practice there in the future. Because of the aura of the two kings inside him, the magma wouldn't pose a threat to him anymore. She asked him to give her his hand. He felt a tingling sensation running through it. She told him it had been done and he could go practice now. He wished to use the five magic skills he had learned freely today. He was amazed by how much magical energy there was in the magma. Yan didn't understand why he had not tried to resist at all. After his training, he returned to the outer plaza of the academy. He knew the Yin Yang Academy was underground, but such a large space felt a little too exaggerated. The senior sister had told him to wait there for his special tutor. She had also reminded him to not be late, since he didn't know what kind of person they would be. Suddenly, Shang came face to face with him. He told Dong he had not expected him to become Shang's junior. Dong asked him why he was there. Shang told him he just wanted to sincerely invite him to join the bartender guild. Ever since that day, the vice president had become a fan of his wine. He was going to try everything in his power to make Dong join their guild. He had given Shang the task of recruiting Dong. Dong thought about it for a moment and rejected his offer. Shang tried to convince him that there were many advantages to joining. They were even willing to teach him a fatal skill as a sign of sincerity from their side. Dong told him he just didn't want to join any bartender guild. He also didn't need any fatal skills. The only way he would join was if one of them was able to beat him in bartending. Shang said they would teach him two fatal skills. This should be enough for him to join. It started begging him, seeing the professor would shred him into pieces. Dong refused. He had more important things to do. Suddenly, he felt a strong presence behind him. The man asked if he was Dong. He asked the man who he was and why he was silently sneaking around other people, informed him that he was going to be his special professor from then on. His name was Ju Rong. He told him that no matter how good he had been in the past, there was only one requirement for studying with him. He had to not be afraid of suffering. He quickly analyzed Dong's flame magic and then told Dong to follow him. Ju Rong asked if he had been taught by Dean Yang. Dong said he hadn't. Ju Rong was glad because he knew Dong had not been misled. Dong suddenly fell silent. Ju Rong asked him what was wrong. Dong told him he didn't need him as his professor. Yang was a great teacher, and he would not allow him to be insulted. Even though the dean had never taught him, he had taken him up when he was in his most difficult time and had brought him into the world of sorcery. Ju Rong said that he didn't even deserve to be insulted by him. He asked Dong if he really thought he didn't need a professor. If he wanted to be recognized and respected by others, he had to rely on his own strength. 
He activated a three-crown defensive cover technique and told Dong that if he was able to break it, he would take back what he had just said and explain everything to him. Dong felt intimidated by the powerful force, but he knew he could not allow anyone to insult Dean Yang. Yang had done his best to help him whenever he could. It was also thanks to him that Dong was now a sorcerer. He was like a brother as well as a father to him. He was the closest thing to a family member he had ever had. Dong knew he couldn't back down. He activated his dual flame techniques and got ready to fight. He requested the professor to take back what he had just said. He used his combined skill, quartet, and fired it at the professor. He realized that the quartet was consuming mana too fast. It was still not ready to be used. Zhu Rong asked him if he should be laying on the ground right after attacking. Would soon end up dead if he kept underestimating his enemies. Don't forget to like and comment for the next part. Join our Discord for the name of the book and subscribe for more videos from us.